Give me one sec, by the way. Give me one sec, by the way. Yo, what's good, see? What's good, see? What's good? What's good, Hainan? What's good, Revert? What's good? What's good? What's good? Let me open up the Discord right quick. Let me open up the Discord right quick because I know this dumb stuff I low key miss not just from last stream but from even before that, and some from this weekend. So you already see what we got going on though. You already see what we got going on. Let me take this off. Let me take this off. Yo, what's good, uh, Rel? But by the way, Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, right? Understand. Eight game win streak. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if Jason in here. I don't know if P in here. But they're on an eight game win streak. But the question about it, the real thing about it, the tough thing about it, is that Golden State is one spot above them. And I don't know if the NBA gonna let that shit happen. I don't know if Steph gonna let that shit happen. So we could only we could only wait and see. Only time gonna tell. But they've been hot ever since I dropped that video. <laughs> Ever since I dropped that video, it's not like it's just been some, oh, damn, out the blue. That's all I got to say, bro. Since I dropped that video, they've been going off. Um, so, if they win today against Portland, they have a game back from 10, but they still got, like, another 10 games left. Uh, what's, uh, what's good, Kira? Being here, why I've been in the gym? If you're not here, you better be in the gym. <laughs> you better be in the gym. Y'all got to understand. If you're not going to be in the stream studying film, you got to at least be in the gym. And if you're not in the gym, you got to be doing something productive, all right? You can't just be watching TV or some shit. Like, at that point, you're not even investing into yourself, but right? You got to lock in. So, that's the only real excuse as to why someone should not be in the stream. Uh, uh check it, jump check DM. Where? Check DM. Send it in the Discord. As a matter of fact, let me send the Discord link. Send it in the Discord. Hold on. I don't know if you sent a DM on Instagram, DM on... Regardless though, it's, it's gonna be better just to send it overall in the discord Let me send the discord link Pin that right there in the chat, but yeah, everything's gonna be just easier to see in the discord. So Let me pause this right quick, but yeah Everything's just easier to see because I can just see everything top to bottom. It's not like I got to be clicking through people's names and shit. So, hold on. Who, who, who else in here? Yo, what's good, P? Hey, P, how you feeling right now? How y'all how, how Rockets fans feeling right now? How y'all feeling right now? Steph Curry, watch out. <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> the thing is, I don't think you got to worry about Steph so much. Who you got to worry about is Adam Silver. Who you got to worry about is the people in the striped shirts. Who you got to worry about is the people behind closed doors. That's the people you got to worry about, all right? Because the ratings for a Lakers Warriors playing game, nine and ten, is tremendously, and I mean tremendously, higher than that of a Lakers Rockets nine and ten. That's the only thing I would worry about if I was y'all. This may just be some plot twist, like end of season plot twist to get some people's hopes up, like y'all. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Jalen Green on some new shit like he was doing last year. He went off at the end of the season. I don't know, but the 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 amount of money they're gonna make. With the Lakers Warriors in comparison to Rockets, uh, uh, what you gonna call it? A Rockets Lakers, it's a completely different thing. So, and even then, you gotta worry about the fact you gotta go play LeBron James and Anthony Davis in a playing game without no big men. Yes, without no big men. So I, <laughs> that shit's gonna be some goddamn bully ball. You know what I'm saying? Dylan Brooks tried to even hold his own when he was in Memphis. With Jaron Jackson in this back line, but that's just not even enough. They got who do they even play at the five? Jock Landale, <laughs> bro. I'm I'm I've, I'm dead ass really trying to think who's their five. And I just watched the whole game. Who was set, bro? I'm dead. I'm confused. Hold on. I ain't gonna lie. It's it's it's, it's rough. It's rough. Now I, I ain't trying to kill y'all hopes. 
Because y'all do y'all, It would be a little better for y'all next year You know what I'm saying Get some momentum for next year You know But who the hell is y'all five right now I just don't even know I just watched the whole game I still don't even know uh, Bro y'all Do y'all even play a five Do y'all even play a five Y'all, y'all don't even play a five man Oh I ain't gonna lie Oh Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. All right, let's get this straight. You got no Shangun. Steven Adams hurt. Um, Lant, bro, come on. I ain't going to lie. It's going to be rough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be rough. Regardless, if you make a playing game, bro, if you make a playing game, that should just be all. You should just be happy off that, okay? Just be happy off that. Uh, Let me see. Where Where is he at? It would be nice. To see. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. It would be weird not to see him. But you know how it goes when the Lakers play the Warriors. They're going to pound the ball in the paint. The Warriors going to shoot their threes. Unless they have, like, a crazy game and they're hitting everything, I don't know if they're going to be able to actually win that game against the Lakers. You know what they're going to do. AD, paint, Braun, paint, everything going into the paint. And they can't stop it because they got no big. So it's gonna, it'll be tough. Uh, let me send stuff. All right, Beth, send stuff, send stuff in there. Uh, by the way, I'm going to try to make this stream more time efficient. I'm going to make this stream more time efficient. Because for two reasons. One, two reasons. The stream's been going like two and a half hours. That's been cutting into the rest of my time of my day, right? I need to be more efficient. I got other things I need to do. I got more things I need to learn. First and foremost. And two, I'm about to drop the Patreon to where any of y'all can send me messages throughout any point in the day. You can send me anything throughout the day. And y'all can be able to get weekly workouts and y'all can be able to... I will be readily accessible at all points. So, and also, I'm going to be offering one-on-one coaching, by the way. Like, one-on-one personal stuff. To where if y'all got film, I'm going to watch it with y'all. Right? If, if you if you subscribe to that tier. I'm going to have um, consultations, advice, anything throughout the day. 24 hours throughout the day. It's going to be all be on the Patreon. And so, like, it'll be just two times out the month. Maybe 30 minutes or one time out the month, depending on the tiers. Y'all see when it drops. But I'm going to be offering that as well. And if you really think about the packages I'm, I'm going to put together, y'all pay one trainer for one session, the same cost I'll give y'all for four workouts, two exclusive breakdowns, DMs, and then also one-on-one sessions. And y'all be paying the same price for one session. That's that's what that's what you really got to think about. How much am I getting out of my dollar? Once y'all see the tears, it's going to be like, oh, this is going to be way better than any shit I can even do locally. You know what I'm saying? And so... Stay on, stay on the lookout for that. Uh, Kira, you said, I need tips on a diet for a basketball player. Stop eating processed foods. Stop eating processed foods. Stop eating junk foods. Just start there. Because I already know you're probably eating that shit all day, every day. Candies, chips, juice, pizza, burgers, McDonald's, Burger King, um, Subway. That like You know what I'm saying? Cut that stuff out. Eat, just cut that stuff out first. And then once you're able to get the discipline for that, then you'll be able to build a discipline for eating things that are clean. Right, and then you also learn how to eat things that are not just clean, but are actually do taste good. So, uh, say you said how life going? Life been going well. Life been going well. Life been going swell. Been going pretty great. I'm gonna be honest. I remember when you said Steve Curry ain't a good coach. That's aging like fine wine. I said Steve Curry not a good coach. I don't remember. Huh, did I? I don't know. I think it's tough. It's I think Steve Kerr, in order to test. To really see if Steve Kerr is a great coach, you will need to put him into different situations with different, like different players, right? To see how well he's able to adapt according to his roster and his personnel. I think once you take Steph Curry out, when Steph retires, because he's 37, and and if Kerr's still there, then you're gonna really see is he a good coach, right? Same thing with Spolster, right? You didn't say Spolster was a great coach when he had Brian, D Wade, Chris Bosh. You didn't say he was a good coach until. He started having a bunch of non-all-stars, right? Maybe a few players, solid players, and they're having winning records getting into the playoffs, right? That's when you're like, oh, Eric Spolster really could coach, and they're still competing, right? Because you're able to test the skill of a coach by how much they're able to get out of players you don't think could be able to do something, right? Because you know, like, LeBron is talented. You know D-Wade, Chris Bosh. You know these dudes are talented, obviously. Like, you don't even need to get anything out of them because they're already going to bring it out of themselves. Whereas a coach with players who have some sort of talent but not natural raw talent like the superstars, and they're able to find exactly what it is, how to push those buttons, and then be able to put them at a point where they could showcase everything that they got, 
and even glorify them to an extent, like a gay Vincent who has even fucking played for the Lakers, right? Once you're able to see that, then it, you can say, oh, he's a really good coach. So it's going to be a little while. Once Steph retires and once that crew is gone, then that, that's when uh, Steve Kerr's validity as a coach is really going to be tested. Uh, what's good, Jericho? Uh, yeah, I seen that Adam stuff. Jock Landell's probably, bro. Jock Landell on, a, on, on Anthony Davis. Come on, come on, come on, it's Jack, come on, it's Jack, come on, come on, let's just be cute to being. Never seen the Rockets in any competitive game since I started watching NBA. Yo, they fucking cooked the Jazz, I ain't gonna lie, the Jazz was playing boo-boo, I ain't gonna lie, the Jazz was playing boo-boo. But regardless, Jalen Green and Van Vliet combined for 75, so I had to peep. I had to peep, and all y'all players in here, y'all probably might already be small guards, because that's a vast majority of hoopers, small guards, right, because genetics, you know what I'm saying? So, I got a lot of, I got... Maybe two, like three real key points and things I really want to emphasize when it comes to Fred Van Vliet that y'all could learn from, from his game. So, um, I need Miami to lock in, lock in and be, uh, sub, be below 500 or be above 500. They definitely going to be above 500. We need Shangun for the playoffs. I ain't going to lie. Regardless, if he comes back, he's not going to be in shape. I don't even think y'all realize that. You'd be like, oh, we're going to get back for the playoffs. He's not going to be in shape. He hurt his leg. His knee and his ankle, both. So he's been doing zero cardio, right? So he's going to get back, but he's going to be boo-boo. It just is what it is. He's not going to be in shape. They're going to the, run him to the ground, and then he's going to be dog-tired. Like, it's going to get ugly. It's going to be bad. So don't think – some players are just going to be good. Russ Westbrook, he hurt his hand, his left hand. So he's still in that bitch every day, conditioned like a motherfucker. Cast on, don't, don't matter – he take that shit all, get a new cast every single workout. He's still in shape. So the Clippers, even though you see him losing right now, when he gets back, you don't got too much to worry about because Russ is going to be Russ because he can stay in shape. Shangun can't stay in shape. The best thing he could do is get an Asana. And Asana does not replicate that of NBA basketball, uh, high-paced um, endurance level of activity. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough regardless. So any any hurting on this at all is tough. What do you write in your uh, black basketball notebook? I got a lot of gems in that notebook. You know you know what? I may even put that notebook on the Patreon. I may literally just take pictures of pages because I got just like some of the little detail stuff I know and some of the things I don't even talk about, right? You got to understand, in that little black book, I don't even think y'all can see it, but there's a little black book right there next to the Kobe one, right? That little black book, it has concepts about how to train, like, player training, like individual training that I don't even talk about in here because we're not even tra- like this is not training, right? This is not individual skills training. And so I got concepts in there that we don't even talk about. I have even mentioned because this is just not the setting. Whereas say I may put it on the Patreon or some shit and then y'all can see, okay, this is how I layer this workout, like start to finish, or this is the type of drill I could do with one of my friends when I'm in the gym so you get better at this skill. Like, I have a whole bunch of shit on that. Because when I was first starting, when I was first writing shit down, I was thinking of things from a player development standpoint and seeing, okay, what could work, what doesn't work, what did I like, what did I not like, what brought me results, what did not bring me results. And so, there's a lot of shit in there. I ain't gonna lie. But on top of it, also, there's, like, details on moves, on reads, like, little things like that as well. And it's filled up front to back. What's the difference between the, between membership? Uh... It's basically going to be, it's going to be the, say, take what I've done for them in the membership section on YouTube and then, then like put that shit on crack, right? I'm a, <laughs> that shit's going to be like 10 times, like 10 times more invested, way higher quality. You know what I'm saying? Just way better in general, right? To where I'm putting a full length workout. I'm not talking just one workout. Like I was putting in the membership section, like one individual thing. I'm talking like a whole workout split for like a day. Right. So working on the posterior chain, doing plyometrics and mixing that in with strength training. Um, I'm going to have all the breakdowns. Y'all always recommend me, like say like a Chris likes or Euro League. I'm going to do one to two of those a month and put those only exclusively on the Patreon. Right. So, boom, you're going to see breakdowns like that as well on the Patreon. It's just literally only going to be there. You may maybe see a clip. Right. Or something on Instagram if it's that good. But. Outside from that, it's only gonna it's only gonna be on there. You're not gonna be able to see the full shit unless you actually on Patreon. So 
I'm gonna have shit like that. The ones as to which I don't, I won't really use because like YouTube and whatnot. There's certain topics as to which I really want to get to because it's gonna help grow my channel. And so the ones as to which I may not get to, it's gonna go on the Patreon. So gonna be things like that, direct messages I told y'all, one on one calls like I'll, I told y'all before. But it's just gonna be, I'm actually going to invest my time and my energy into that. So stay on the lookout for it. Is it required to shoot threes in modern basketball era? I ain't gonna lie, Gus 22, it is. If you can't shoot threes, it's like you, they're gonna find someone who can because if you can't shoot, you don't have as much space for the players that you need to be able to do what they need to do. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a, it's just gonna pack the paint. It's gonna make the defense not really have to guard. And so, like, even begin to think about like how '90s basketball was played, right? You got a whole bunch of players packing the paint because people can't shoot. So now you can't get into the lane. You can't get as many takes for yourself. You can't get inside and put a defense rotation and kick out because people can't shoot. So now you're going to score less, and the bas- and basketball is a game of scoring, right? And so with the three becoming so predominant in the game, you're going to practically need it at any position damn near. So it's probably the most important skill in this, in the, in this game. You should be analyzing me, me instead of, <laughs> uh, nah, I'm good. I'm good, Dream. I'm good, Dream. Block Landale. I remember Landale on the sun. I was like, oh, it's just someone's name you just come across. You just like, oh, that's him. But I had to wear Jalen Green jersey to practice. Bro, you no way you wore a fucking Jalen Green jersey to practice. You're capping. You're capping. I don't need a picture of that. No way you you went to practice in the Jalen Green jersey. If you practice, if you if you hold on, if you actually go practice, you go work out, and you wear an NBA player's jersey, I ain't gonna lie, that might be glazing, bro. That might be great. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. It's just like, yo, that's wild, bro. Like you, you, <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> that's kind of crazy to me, bro. That's kind of crazy, bro. I don't know. I don't know what y'all think, but that's wild. I ain't. I ain't never gonna do that shit. Hold on. I don't think y'all seen what I just said in the real in the chat. Hold on. Y'all see what he said? Y'all see what he said, right? He was, might be the hottest player in the NBA on and off the court. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You got it, bro. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. I, I understand your fandom now. I see I see your level of fandom. I see your level of fandom. You got it. Uh, how you sort the book out, like the table of contents type? How'd I sort it out? I mean, honestly, a lot of the topics I, I, I'll go into and I'll learn would just be would just be more so like depending on what whatever I'm trying to just get better at. There's not no set structure like from start to finish. Like maybe day to day, like if I finish covering a certain topic, I'll just move on to another one I feel I need to learn, right? Or I watch a new player, watch a new concept. Like there's no real structure from start to finish and continuity between each one. It's just that each time I went to go study, there's a concept in there then it's just all broken apart like between page page to page or however many pages i use for that concept so uh you know when it'll come out on the price yet i got like five different tiers i got like five different tiers so each tier is gonna have different different um levels of resources and accesses and by each one you're gonna there's gonna be of course better better uh access or better amenities you know what i'm saying there'll be better ones so uh, let me see, bro. <laughs> Watched it being so bad. Kentucky lose a couple of days ago. Yo, I peeped that shit. I, I went to go check the March Madness joint. I went to go see what teams are still there. I was like, wait, Kentucky's gone? Damn, so y'all, y'all's you glorious King Rob, Rob Dillingham is gone. That's tough, man. That's tough. That is very tough. That is super tough, man. That's 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 tough right there. That's tough right there. Um, I have zero NBA jerseys. I have zero NBA jerseys. I ain't gonna lie. I got 12 Westbrook jerseys. I have... You're, you're capping. There's no way you buy 12 Russell Westbrook jerseys. You realize what 12 Russell Westbrook jerseys is? If they're authentic, if they're real, that's about $1,500 or so. You know what I'm saying? It's like maybe 100 a piece and some change, 150 a piece. No way, bro. You don't got 12 Russell Westbrook jerseys. What separates good to great bigs at all levels? Um, I think properly developing your 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 skills package, right? Probably, properly developing your bag. Because the thing is with today's game, a lot of modern day, a lot of modern day bigs want to be guards, but not a lot, but not all of modern day bigs can be guards. 
You understand what I'm saying? Let me even repeat that, right? A lot of modern day bigs want to be guards, but not all modern day bigs can be guards. Y'all can't all have that Wimby, that Chet style of big man, right? What it really is going to be about 90% of the time is unless you from a young age developed the guard style of movement and now you've kind of innately have the ability to move in that capacity, then you're probably going to be able to have that guard style. But if you're not, and if you're part of that 90% who doesn't have it, essentially it could be learned, but it's probably a waste of your time. What you should do is begin to develop a really good pick and pick and roll, pick and pop, pick and short roll, right? Learn those concepts because I could guarantee you if you're a big and you learn how to hard roll and then be able to make reads to the weak side, be able to short roll, be able to float midi pop and then even be able to pop and get out to the perimeter, shoot that three. They're going to have so many opportunities just to be able to score. If you also set good screens as well, which is something you can even place more of an emphasis on because the better screen you set, the more open you will get. It's a bar. That's a big man bar. Y'all got to really understand the better screen you set, the more open you will get. Y'all got to understand that concept. And so now it's going to lead you to more scoring opportunities, more opportunities to make plays, more exposure for you in your own game. But that starts with you not trying to be someone else and trying to be something you're not. And you simply looking at yourself from an objective standpoint and seeing what's my superpower in this game of basketball? What am I actually really good at? Right. What am I naturally good at? And I'll build your skill, build your skill set, build your bag, build um, the reads, the players you watch around that. So now you're going to begin to be unique. And that's what's going to set you apart from all your competition, because you've developed a style of game. You've developed a skill set that no other big has, that no other player has. And now once a team that comes across you, because realize if you're in high school trying to go to college or any level, right, trying to find a team. If you only need one, you only need one team. You only need one fit. Y'all think I need 10, 15, 20, 25 different offers. But in reality, no, you don't. All you need is one. You just need that one fit. And once you get that one fit, once you find that one fit, that's just going to take you to the moon. I can guarantee you that one great fit, right? You got to understand if I'm a Hooper, I would rather have one offer for a team that fits me perfectly than be somebody with 10 to 15, 20 offers, and all those teams are decent fits. Why? The reason why a lot of y'all even want to have that 10 to 15 to 20 offers is just so you can be able to show it off. So you can be, be on the gram and put it to your highlight section. So you can be able to show, oh, damn, this school want me, that school want me. You want to have all this attention towards you so people think, oh, yeah, he's really good. But in reality, if you want to think about your own personal success, the only thing that matters is that one fit that you need all you need is that one fit you don't need you don't need all these different offers all these different looks that's just bullshit that shit is bullshit and so once y'all even begin to realize that and even the players who now decide to sign will sign to the team that's most notable that's most known that's most popular just so people can be like oh damn he went to that school but now you can realize that shit's a terrible fit that shit's a terrible fit Y'all got to even understand that. I, I may even have to clip that because there's a lot of gems right there and then. So I just had to say that. I had to go on my little tangent. There ain't 12 different versions of a jersey. All through the... Hey, if he was collecting, if he was collecting since like 2012, bro, he could have 12. Because you, you could go to like the Thunder Shop and be able to get all the alternate jerseys and all that other stuff. And then like by the year, like, you, you know what I'm saying? You could probably get that. And then the Christmas jerseys or some shit they released... You know what I'm saying? There probably could be 12. Then you could get the UCLA. And then maybe if he has a high school. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, let me see. Let me see. You seen the Baylor game? No, nah, I haven't watched any of the games. I'm about to start keeping up today. Starting today, I'm about to start keeping up with March Madness. Because I know the first couple of rounds is like, okay, let's let that shit breeze by. It's going to be some blowouts. But now it's like, okay, you're down to the last 16. I'm going to start watching. Now I'm going to start watching. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay tuned, be on the lookout for the scores, even maybe even ch tune into some games as long as they're not late because I got to get my sleep. I got to sleep. So, of course, I'm, I'm going I'm to stay tuned in starting now. And if there's any good games, bro, let me know. If there's any good games, let me know. What's a bad feeling? Lakers still got a jersey. <laughs> Triple double off the bench. I Wait, Westbrook probably does have 12 jerseys. He wants, yeah, he does. OKC and then all the alternates that released to OKC. Then you got Houston, 
than even Houston, regular home away alternates. Then you got Washington, then you got Lakers, and you got Clippers. Easy. Easy. You could just do home and away for each of those. That's what, eight? And that's not even including the alternates, like I said. So that's a cool maybe 15, then UCLA A jersey. You know what I'm saying? Then add that shit on top as well. So I said perfect screens at perfect angle with 80% of the time, but I'm a shooting guard and my bigs can't screen. Teach your bigs how to screen. You ever think of that? <laughs> y'all ever think of that? Y'all be sitting here and have some sort of skill that y'all great at. And then you're like, yo, you can't do that, but I could do it. You know how to do it, but he doesn't even know how to do it, nor is he conscious of the fact that he's bad at doing it. He just does it, right? Sometimes you got to understand, not everybody is ignorant. Sometimes they're just, they just don't have the knowledge. Y'all got to understand that. It's not like he already knows what to do and is deciding not to do what's right and not how to do it best. He's trying his best. They're trying their best, but they just don't know how to do it any better. And that's where you, even as a teammate, you step in because this is not about you versus me. This is about you and me. This is a team. This is unity, you and I. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to understand that as well. So if you know how to do some shit good, go show your teammate how to do it because if he's doing something that's bad, that could be a detriment to the team. A detriment to the team is also a detriment to you. Y'all got to take that approach as well. Y'all got to really understand that. Let me see what else is in here. Bronny's a terrible fit on the Trojans. Bronny going to go to the league. I ain't going to lie. He had a low-key little boo-boo season, but I don't care if he's going to go to the league. What skills would you lock in off your 6'9 player, wing, or big skills? Well, first and foremost, like I said before, that, that pick and pop, that pick and pop stuff, you 6'9", you could get played. You'll probably end up getting played at maybe that four, that four spot. Um, if you're really talking like longevity, where you should, where you may end up being, you could be a four, you could be a three. And so regardless, what you're going to need is that catch and shoot. You're going to need that catch and shoot game most definitely. Being able to lift, drift, pop. Um, you know what I'm saying? The reverse pivots over both shoulders when off the pop. Um, I would also say at that point, you also got to look at that point. You got to see what your strength is, right? Because remember what I said when I was talking about just building that skill set in general. What's your superpower? Right. What's your strength in this game that you're naturally good at and then build your game accordingly, build your game exactly around that as well, because on top of the shot that you'll need, because maybe the shot is your best thing, but maybe it's not. Maybe you have some other thing that you're really good at as well. And so that's where you got to begin to figure out what's your superpower, what's your strength, what's the core, what's the root of your game. And then, of course, adding the shot with that if it is not that. So it depends on what your strength is, because if you know exactly what that is. Let me know what it is, and then maybe you could try to formulate some shit around that. Some six nine guys have a long coordination; don't got a choice but to be a center. I mean, shit, they don't they don't really got a choice. But the thing is, they may be uncoordinated, but they don't even realize, oh shit, I'm uncoordinated. <laughs> they 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 they'll be out here thinking I could do all this stuff, and I like the way as to which they see it from their eyes, right? And this the way they perceive the world. They don't see how their body looks when they do these moves, right? <laughs> they never do the move in the mirror. <laughs> y'all really got to understand. Some of y'all get y'all game twisted and fucked up because y'all never seen yourself do a certain move and then do a move and compare it to how it actually looks like, right? All you do is simply just do, see the world, see everything from, you see everything externally, right? You don't see what's actually going on, what's transpiring, right? So some of y'all may just need to hit the move in the mirror and be like, do I really look like PG when I do this shit? <laughs> do I really do, do I really look like Steph when I'm trying to take these shots? Do I look as controlled? Do I look as balanced? Do I look as coordinated? And most of the time, it's probably going to be no. And that's the hard truth people cannot get themselves over, which is stopping them from actually getting better. I guarantee you, that's that one blockade. That's a, little, a whole blockade, whole barrier that's stopping people from getting better. They do not want to face the fact of the truth, which is... I'm not like PG right now, and I must go work to be able to even try to touch that level. And by the way, speaking of PG, I have a PG tier in the in the, in the um, Patreon, and so it's gonna have all the workouts, like I said, for functional strength training, for vertical jump training. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, what do you look like, Prime Prime DeAndre Jordan while dribbling? I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> should be looking wack as shit, bro. Should be looking wack. Uh, pick and rolls is a, is a best thing you can master, both guard and big. Exactly, because the pick and roll has literally been in the game since the day, like, 50s. You know what I'm saying? Since way back. 
So, like, that's one thing that's never going to lead the game. So, if you at least learn how to operate in that, whether you're on the ball, in the action, or off the ball, you're going to find a spot on the floor. I could guarantee you that as well. Guarantee you that. So, uh, when we're all going to play, it's the best feeling in the world. Exa- bro, when you, it's not even just that. When you know what to read and know how to react to certain situations, not just you, but, like, as a team, that shit just like, yo, we're clicking. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're in a flow. And that's where even you as a player, because in order for you to be the best version of yourself, the key for you is to now begin to learn all the spots, learn all the positioning, learn how everybody must react to where you know how to operate according to them. And if they don't know it, you could teach them. Y'all got to understand that. Y'all got to know all parts. Don't just be a person who usually camps a quarter on a pick and roll and only think, all right, I know when I know when I need to lift. I know when I need to drift. Y'all also got to understand what when I need to lift according to this player. Now, now change your perspective, right? Put yourself in the shoes of the player who has to roll and understand and then be able to teach them. Okay, you got to, when this happens, do this. So then I'm going to be here. And like, you got to also be that instructor. Y'all also got to be that instructor. That's another key part of it. Is there a Rob Dillahan section in the Patreon? Nah, all the all the tiers, all the tiers are based off like jersey numbers. They're based off like jersey numbers, player numbers, and stuff like that. So Rob Dillahan, if you got a zero, I can't shit, I can't have a, there's no free section. So uh my son's twenty, can I send you his film? Uh yeah, I when I I'm to send me his film. Send me, send me either DM me on Instagram, DM me on um preferably Instagram. I'll probably see it on Instagram. It's more easier to filter. Then be like, yo, I'm from stream. Woo woo, blah, blah, blah. Send me, then send that stuff to me. And then, like I said, when I drop the Patreon, I could do, I'll be doing one-on-one calls to where I'll, I'll not just watch the film, say when I'm live, but I'll put you in a, in a video call. We could be on some sort of call and I could watch it with you simultaneously. And so now it's just going to be even better. Like that's reserve time. I'm not going to be live. I'm not going to, nothing like that. That's personal time. And then you'll get exactly the one-on-one calls. You'll get workouts. You'll get exclusive breakdowns. You'll get DM messages day by day. So send that to me. And I, like I said, the Discord is going to drop probably, or the Patreon, I mean, within the next week. Probably within the next week. Let me just stack up on some workouts, get a few workouts recorded this week, and then I'm probably going to just start, I'm going to get that shit out this weekend. So, And then whenever I, whenever that's done, I'll send the link to you. So then you can choose whatever tier you want to use. Bronny beating, I ain't going to lie, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about Bronny being a Rob Dillahan. That's kind of crazy. How do you know which position is best for you in basketball? I don't think you should worry about your position. Worry about your strength. Because once you know what your strength is and you build upon that, then that will determine your position. Because for me, I've always been, I'm, I'm about six foot, I'm about six one, right? And so it's like, oh, I didn't try to say, okay, I must build the skills of a point guard because I'm six one. What I ended up doing and realizing is that my skill, what I was best at, right? What my brain kind of learned best with shooting, cause I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to cook. Hold on, hold on. I just realized this. I be having, I just be having realizations and understandings while live on stream. My natural skill was not shooting, right? What allowed me to even learn shooting and get get me to be a shooter was, and what allowed that to even be my best skill is because just the way my brain worked and how I thought and just who I was as a human being, the concept of shooting. I was able to pick up on those skills and learn it. It was, it was just easier for, for me to be able to process that skill, right? And so sometimes it may not just be, oh, I'm naturally good at this. What skill in this game is easier for me to process and understand, right? And so for me, shooting was just came simple. It was like, okay, if I can hit this catch and shoot shot, boom, I got that. All right, now I get the curls left, right, right, left. Okay, get that. All right, if they chase me over the top on the, on the pin down, boom, curl that, boom, right there. All right, now if I'm playing in the zone, run along the baseline, boom. If I got a floppy action, boom, going out this way, learn how to reverse pivot. It just, everything processed easier for me, right? So it's not like I came out the womb and I got a strap. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like it wasn't like that. Nor did I step into the game and I was just like, I could really shoot. But it was just more so my brain, it was just easier for me to understand that skill. So sometimes that's what it must be. And going back to what you said, though, you got to figure out what was your strength. Like, what were you really good at? Right. And then that's going to determine your position. So I didn't go to and say, OK, I got to pick up a point guard skill, how to run an offense, how to be a playmaker, because the, the dribbling stuff, that shit didn't click for me. Right. It didn't click for me. And so I ended up being more so of a combo guard, especially in a, in a game where there's going to be a lot of sm- guards around my height, like around six, six, one. 
ish, there's going to be someone else to play that point guard. And so I ended up finding my spot on the team because I was just a shooter. Wasn't the person to play point guard. I was a shooter. So I found my spot just by learning what I was good at. So trust that. Um, check Discord been uh, playing since March. All right, I'm, I'm going to check Discord right now. I need, I need to lock in and check Discord. I need to lock in. I said I got to be more time efficient. Brownie is not beating. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I don't know about Brownie beating uh, Robin the ones. Like I said, Rob got that. He just be he, he short-term memory, bro. He don't give a fuck. Bronny's dad is LeBron. If that's not clutch, Gene, I don't know what is. I mean, clutch, <laughs> this is, he's so stupid, bro. He said clutch gene. This is not a gene, bro. It's not It's not a genetic code. It's not a ACTG, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck the, um, the chromosomes is, bro. That shit, not that. Um, Pat, there's 25 of us in the chat. It's pretty active. You keep moving. Uh, but you get in there. Hey, I, indeed, I'm getting there. Indeed, I'm getting there. Indeed, I'm getting there. I don't even be peeping when I'm live. I'll just be flung. All right, let me check the Discord. I'm going to check the Discord now. We're going to be in the Discord for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Maybe a cool 15, 20 minutes. All right, so let me get some water, though, right quick before you even get started. Let me even get, get some water. By the way, I got some new shit that I'm about to start doing for the stream. I got, like, a new whole design layout. Y'all gonna love it, bro. It's gonna make the breakdowns 10 times better. Because I started realizing, okay, how can I get this shit even better? It's gonna help y'all understand the breakdowns way more. I'll, I'll, that's all I'm gonna say. All I'm gonna say is that when y'all watch the breakdown aesthetically and then in terms of being able to comprehend information, it's gonna be way better. Travel. Travel. travel y'all got to learn how to dunk in game rhythm it's cool to do this to start right it's cool to do this to start just to understand how i need to put the ball in the rim but when y'all really say okay i want to actually be able to dunk y'all got to start doing a between your legs one two dribbles get to the rim you know what i'm saying like going right going left and then doing these different type of pickups understanding certain reads that you'll have to actually go to the rim and get a dunk right and so that's the most important part uh did he say anything about it It's cool. It's cool. This is like this is like I was doing in high school. That was that was like my package right there in high school. In high school, right? Y'all see me windmilling now and shit, but this is like this is how I, maybe I was dunking when I was in high school, but now I'm like touching. I can probably touch like a good like eleven foot and four inches ish, somewhere around there. But it's cool though. Cool pack. Cool package. But just keep keep getting better. Keep getting used to just getting the ball in the rim. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the fact it was a travel. Keep getting used to that. And then once it's just getting easy, then you got to start doing game game style movements. He's 6'1". Yeah, same shit then like 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 I was too. Uh, what you missed? You ain't missed too much. You ain't missed too much. All you did miss was some gems though. I had some gems. I had some gems at the start of the stream. Maybe like the first first like 35 minutes or so. I had some gems in there. Uh, you said, yeah, yeah, they do. You gotta, <laughs> you wild as fuck. We done with the 2020s. Bro, are y'all done with every fucking era, bro? Y'all, y'all took this shit so far. That shit is wild. This is not even, not even halfway through the 20s. This is not even halfway through the 20s, bro. <laughs> not even halfway through the 20s. Y'all out here talking about some, <laughs> we done with the 20s. I seen that shit in my comment section. I'm like, yo, y'all wild as fuck. Y'all done with Wemby. No the fuck y'all not done with Wemby. Y'all still gonna be Ryan. Pause. Y'all still gonna be you fuck with him. Oh, somebody actually sent multiple misses. Somebody actually sent multiple shots and he sent misses. Short? Okay. Look, look, look. I, I, I love to see these. If you're gonna airball, at least, at least you threw it in there. At least you threw it in there. Alright, at least you threw it in there. back rim look th look if, if y'all ever wondered all right how could i see how i miss shots right understand first one air ball left right second one he hit it next one he hit back rim right this one made it let's see how the other one's looking like another hit i want to see the misses though i really want to see the misses hopefully there's more in, more in here 
right side of the rim. Damn. Cap cut. <laughs> Cap cut. But look, all I was able to pick up off of that, right, just off the strength of this alone. Is there a second video? Let me see this other video. Let me let me let me see this other one. Buddy with the cap cut. So that one was left. That one was left. Oh, he slowed it down. He slowed it down. Let me see. The, let me see the outcome. Damn. Let me see. I'll try to see the outcome. So look, look. In those two videos alone, in those two videos alone, we saw damn near every miss that we could get, except for a a long brick, right? Where it just hits backboard first, and you just you miss everything over the rim, right? So I think we've seen every type of miss. We've seen a short air ball. We've seen a back rim. We've seen a left rim. We've seen a right rim. So that just that overall, just seeing the trends, right? Y'all gotta take almost a scientific approach to this and see what's the trends look like. That means. Out of the five type of misses you could have, or you could have a short front rim, but out of the five, really five or so that you could have, it was all dispersed one, 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 right? And so that's just showing an overall inconsistency of a jump shot. So what's the steps that should be taken now? Where should I do now to make sure my jump shot's consistent? Because I'm missing all my shots every which way, right? I'm missing them right, I'm missing them left, I'm missing them long, I'm missing them short. How should I now approach fixing my jumper? I would, if I were you, I would begin to now, instead of shooting threes, I will go sub, uh, a substantially long period of time working inside the arc, right? Working inside the paint, doing form shots, but then working on the mid-range game. Because also, if you're in the stream right now, how old are you? How old are you as well? Because a lot of y'all don't understand this is, a, this, is, this is about playing the long game, right? And especially entering the offseason, you got time. Right, especially into the offseason, you got time. So let me know how old are you, and that's gonna allow me to, to kind of even formulate a plan that can help you be able to improve your shot. Uh, to dunk 16. Okay, so this, right? Okay, so you're 16. So you're 16. So you still got another year of high school left, correct? And so now, Use this summer to build that foundation and consistency in your jump shot, right? Use this summer to do that. Work inside the arc. Shoot. Master the mid-range game. Oh, this. You talking about this? Oh, okay. No, no, no. That's that's him. That's a different person. So someone else. Who was it? Who was it? Who said check jump shot? Unless somebody else sent this jump shot in. Unless somebody else sent the jump shot. Yeah, you said you're, you're the white kid. Okay. So I thought you was talking like you were saying him because he had two dunks at the start. Uh, since you was filming Instagram is number 30. Thanks again. All right, bet that, bet that. He said that at the top, but I'll go check that as soon as I finish stream. Um, game Day Athletics. That's him. Game Day Athletics. So, whatchamacallit. I would I, I would formulate his the shooting around being, play, being in the mid-range and form shooting because you need to build a consistency by lessening and making some variables more simple, right? What's the variables? Distance. That's the one as to which you just got to take away the distance and shooting off the dribble. Those are the two variables that make shooting more difficult. And so if you just take away those, make it as simple as possible, take away the dribble, right, which he's already not not using, and then also take away the um, distance, it's going to make it easier for him to build muscle memory so that you could be able to actually knock this shot down, right? It's going to make it way easier to build the muscle memory so you know exactly what you must do so you can be able to make a shot, which is why Steph when he was going into his junior year, did form shooting for three months all inside the paint, did a step out the paint one once the entire summer, and then he came back the next year, he was five times better of a shooter, right? It's about building the fundamentals so you could train your body to only know what to do what's right, right? That's the key, training your body so you only know what to do what's right. And so that's why you take away the distance. You can get more reps. It makes it easier. You show yourself exactly how you got to make a shot. Say you can only start counting switches. Say when I do form switches too. Or when I do form shots, I only count switches because I'm shooting with an intention. Right? I'm forcing my body to replicate a certain result, an exact result. Which means I now have to shoot a certain way every single time in order for this to count. In order for me to actually progress in this workout. So that's one thing I did that helps a shit ton. Um... So, I would say just to take away the, cut down the distance, work on the mid range, work on the form shot, like with an abundance as well. Not just, okay, let's do this for 15, 20 minutes. I'm talking an hour. 
right? I'm talking getting 200 form shot or mid range makes and 300 total makes, right? Between form shots and mid range shots within a workout. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking high quantities every single day over and over and over until you get bored. Then once you get bored, keep getting bored. Get see how more much more bored you how much more bored you could get. You know what I'm saying? Like find continue to do that because that boredom bring, breeds greatness. Is it good if I do one week of intense basketball workout then one week of rest? Damn, hell no. One week of rest is crazy. What well, hell no? Let me see what else we got in here. One week of rest is oh, that's berserk. That's berserk. I ain't never rest a week in my life. The longest I bro, the la- ever since I committed myself to basketball, the most days I've went without working out probably working out entirely or without touching the basketball let me say without touching the basketball probably like three days and that's only two times i could count in the past seven years which is when i went to rolling loud in 2022 and then when i went to my cousin's cousin's graduation in no to rolling loud in 2021 and then my cousin's graduation in 2022 two times where i've went maybe consecutive days without touching a basketball and even then, I don't, I don't even be taking days off at all. So like, one that's crazy. You can't take a, a week off. You can't. That's you just can't. How can I train Doc? I can reach the rim by my forearm. I do the same with the ball. You got to make sure you get the Patreon when the Patreon drops. When the Patreon drops. I'm gonna have all my workouts in there. I'm gonna full length workouts. You are gonna pay probably it's like say like ten dollars a month. You're gonna get four workouts in the entire month in itself. Me, weekly workouts. And so you can do the same same workout two three times of the week. Wait for the next week, do the same workout two, three times, right? And then as time goes along, you can mix and match a bunch of workouts that are already in there. And so while you would go and pay a trainer $30, right, for a session, right? You'll pay them $30 for one workout session. You could go get the Patreon. I think the tier for the workouts is going to be $13. Workouts and exclusive breakdowns, you'll pay 13 for four and breakdowns. I'm just talking more bang for your buck. I'm just talking more bang for your buck. And by the way, it's also workouts as to what y'all probably have equipment for. I'm not here using like a hack squat or anything like that or um, a hip thrust machine. Like, no, I'm not using all that complex stuff. Practically going to be all dumbbells. And if not, if I'm using, say, like a barbell, there's going to be a dumbbell variation. So y'all just going to be getting more bang for your buck. I'm going to drop all the gems on there. So or check film. Give me one. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. How do you get by aggressive defenders when bringing the ball ball down as points? Use pace, use pace, speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, because when you speed up and then you get them to speed up, you slow down, get to the stops. That's what's going to create that space. As simple as I could put it. How to be more aggressive. It's not about how to be more aggressive. It's where you should be more aggressive. I can't tell you to be more aggressive as a shooter, as a small forward, if shooting isn't your strength. I can't tell you to be more aggressive as a small forward. If you're a slasher small forward and tell you to start shooting more, like it's it's about what your strength is to, in order for you to determine how you should be aggressive. So, what's your strength? You said how old am I? Um, I'm 20. I'm 20. I'm 20. Y'all probably think I'm old. People, I bro, I be people people saying unk in the comments. I'm like, bro, how old y'all think I am? I'm I'm y'all think I'm 28 or some shit? I'm damn near as old as y'all. Maybe younger than most of y'all. Y'all really got to realize that as well. Um, and it would be a problem uh, punching it off vert. Is it a problem that you're not uh, punching off vert? You're saying that's not a problem? Or are you saying it's a problem if you're not? I'm, I'm not really sure if that is, should be a problem or not, as long as you can finish the fucking bucket. <laughs> as long as you get the bucket, don't, don't really matter to me. But if you are a bigger player, you got to make sure you do, you do just work on catching, just going straight up. Hold on. Okay, nothing right here. Nutrition. I already kind of answered that. Let me see. Hold on. Let me go right back to that section. I'm gonna I'm check. I'm gonna check film. By the way, someone say check. Check your film. Give me one second. Uh, give me one second. All right. Boom. I already checked that. Someone sent a sent jump shot. Someone said something a jump shot right quick. Oh, we need you on ESPN. Keep going. Hey, one day, one day, one, day, one of these days. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be shocking. You know what I'm saying? The day I switch, I'm on like an ESPN or anything like that. It's going to be shocking. It's also going to be refreshing because I'm not going to come in here like the typical reporters do and talk about people's character, talk about how how 
how I perceive them as a human being. I'm just going to talk pure basketball. Talk pure basketball, man. I, I ain't going to keep it anything outside of that. And anything else I may say, it's going to relate directly to basketball. And I'm never going to question somebody's character or bring somebody down at all. I'm just going to see basketball for what it is. So, oh, let me peep the free throw, though. Let me peep the free throw. Let me peep the free throw. Fluidity is way off. Fluidity is off. When it comes to shots like this, um, there's there's a few videos Drew Hanlon has on fluidity. Go to YouTube and search up Drew Hanlon's uh, shot fluidity. And he's talking about concepts of how to actually keep the ball and your body in sync, where they're all going the same direction. Right? The ball going down, you're going down. Your body's going up, the ball is going up. Or if you're already loaded and down, how to be able to find some momentum in the ball and how to have the ball loaded so you can only go up. And so you could you can see a few videos on that concept as well in there. But you can see the the fluidity is off. You're low and you come what the fuck is he doing? Hey yo, what the fuck? Yeah, hey, hey, keep it a beam. When was you seen a who What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro. That's the first time I seen this shit in my life. Buddy tripping. Buddy tripping. I don't know what he, this shit got me distracted, bro. What the fuck is he doing? But yeah, peep those fluidity videos. I just be I be flabbergasted, bro. Like what do what do be going through people's brains sometimes, bro? Like I'm I'm really like, yo, what decide what made you say, let's play this game and I you shoot this free throw, I'ma reach over, slap the flow, pop my booty in there. Like, bro, come on, bro. It's a violation, gang. It's a violation. That was also a violation, too. That's an air ball. But peak the, flu the fluidity, like I said, though. The fluidity. Because it's all about energy transfer in a jump shot. And I'm going to talk about that a lot with Fred Van Vliet. So you could probably could learn a lot from what I'm going to show with Fred Van Vliet. Uh, he shoot high as hell. I think someone said that shit in the Discord. <laughs> he shoot high as shit. The, you're going to be able to find your natural arc to your shot. Once you figure out what your shot is and learn like the certain components, like say fluidity, how to properly transfer energy into the ball to get it to the rim. So you, someone literally said the same shit. Um, what do you think of Pierce Sweat basketball? If you know, if you know, bro, literally, I just <laughs> Pierce Sweat. I was just talking about Drew Hanlon, Pierce Sweat. That's his joint. But let, yeah, I be I peeped some stuff from him like a while back, like when I was just learning the hoops, and I, like I had to be able to see it and then be able to like say, okay, this works, that works, this doesn't work. At least for me. Let me put it like that, at least for me. Like, I picked some certain things up, dropped certain things because it didn't really relay it, didn't really need it. And so I learned a lot from, the, from, from that as a whole. Uh, I'm going to work out before I break break my fast. All right, see, he, oh, he doing Ramadan. I didn't even know he doing Ramadan. This might be a stupid question, but what's the benefits to dunking over laying the ball in if there are any? I mean, there's not, I'm going to keep, there really isn't. Honestly, there really isn't. A lot of people want to dunk for the aesthetic because it's like, oh, I'm getting there dunking the ball. And like, you know what I'm saying? Bounce is cool to have. But in reality, they're both worth two points. The only real benefits to dunking over a layup is the momentum that you could build off of a dunk in the actual course of a game. That's the only thing. That's really the only difference, right? When you look at a, look at a layup and a dunk, they're both worth two points. So in terms of the progression of the game and getting towards that win, they're both the same thing, but the only thing that's different between the two is the momentum that could be built. If you come down the lane, boom, dunk off one, you know what I'm saying? Like you've seen them Russell Westbrook dunks, the Braun dunks, Ja, you know what I'm saying? Those are, of course, rare talents, but regardless, a cool dunk, a solid dunk, will be able to get the crowd going, get them off their feet a little bit. And so if you are losing in the game and you get that dunk, you know what I'm saying? That can help progress in terms of what you're actually trying to do. And so that's really the only difference. Uh, being able to dunk does mean this also indicate you have a higher vert, which also you have better hang time, but do you have better control? Or you could have more hang time, but do you have as much control? I'd rather understand this. I would rather be the person with the with the lay package and be able to have great body control and like a low vert, right? Be the person with a low vert but good body control than the person with the vert and no body control. Because all that person could do is just go in there and dunk. And if you get hit, you can't dunk because you have no body control. So you gotta also realize that as well. Dunk is hard to block. I mean, it depends what level you're playing at. 
it depends what level you playing at. It depends on your level of the skill in itself. So you could say it is, but at the same time, like there's two sides to the spectrum. You know, there's two sides to it. Uh, you said check check the film section. Uh, what do you what do you choose? Be more confident, be more skilled. I mean, now we're beginning to we're gonna we're we're saying all right, be have the mental the mental or the physical. Um, it depends if I if I'm talking about me, would I rather have the skill or have the confidence? I'd rather have the skill because if I have the skill, and I've built the skill through knowledge and understanding of the game. I could be able to take that same ways of learning applied to learn how to build confidence, right? Whereas if I'm a person with confidence, I'm not good with the intricacies. I'm not good with the knowledge. I'm not good with learning. So I, I can't, it's not going to be able to transfer over into another concept in itself. So that's a gem right there. That transfer, that's something that was in the book I'm reading right now, ultra learning. They talked about transfer. If I have skill and I'm able to build that skill, I could be able to transfer how I built the knowledge and now apply it to being able to um, build the confidence, being able to build the mental. Whereas if I already have the mental, I don't really have the ability to transfer that shit over to skill. Because skill requires you to be meticulous. It requires it to be thought out. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather be more, I'd rather be skilled, essentially, because I could get the, con I don't know how to get the confidence. How, for how I should be dunking? I mean, there's no set range in terms of how high you should be dunking. There's no set range in terms of how high you should be dunking, honestly. Because, like, it really always, it ultimately depends on um, what do you need as a player. You know what I'm saying? What do you need as a player? You may not need that vert. Breakdowns be on point? Indeed, indeed, indeed. You just got to learn how to think. You just freestyle dribbling. I ain't going to lie. If y'all see me freestyle dribble, bro. If y'all see me freestyle dribble sometimes, y'all probably be like, how the fuck you move like that? Like, that shit be... <laughs> y'all... <laughs> if y'all seen that shit, bro, y'all like, bro, is he is he dribbling or is he dancing? Like, you, you, it'll be hard to tell the difference. It'll be hard to tell the difference. But, like, there's not really much to break down to a freestyle dribble on the fact of um, it's supposed to be a freestyle dribble and there's no real parameters. The only concepts, essentially, I could say that should be maintained is a good base at times, but also you're going to be changing between levels. Um, placement, your chest. Is your chest up? Is it vertical? Because if you now begin to always dribble with your chest down, it's going to be hard for you to be able to get up into a shot once you develop being able to shoot off the dribble. So, like, there's little things as to which at certain times you're going to need in the course of a freestyle dribble, but... There's not essentially a set parameter you're always going to need to have because it's supposed to be free. So. Also, he said, I feel like his upper body was stiff. Oh, let me see some. Um, stepping into a hezzy. If your upper body is stiff, it's probably your core and your shoulders. That is stiff. You, that is stiff. Breakdown about to happen in like five minutes. This is the last thing I'm looking at. This is the last thing I'm looking at. I kid you not, we're probably by the time we hit one hour live, we're going to already be getting started. So I'm about to get started now. I never, you never freestyle dribble, should you? If you do a shit ton of drills, you should. If you do a shit ton of drills, you should definitely freestyle dribble because it's going to get you from dribbling consciously to dribbling subconsciously. It's probably the best thing that you could do. So like I said, though, you said your upper body is stiff. I want you to just do one thing, right? Go watch T-Mac. Right, go watch T Max Hezzy pull up. And it, do you even need a Hezzy pull up? Hold on, that's a real question. Right? Do you even need to build a, get a get a good Hezzy pull up? If you can't shoot off the catch, you don't need to work on no Hezzy pull up because you're adding distance and you're adding dribbles. That's two variables, like I said before. If you want to be able to get better at a skill, you must take away the, the variables that make it difficult. Right? And so, do you even need a Hezzy pull up? You're probably just sitting here wasting your time. You could be doing something better with your time instead of sitting here working on a Hezzy pull up. Because are you going to get in the game? Like, keep it a bean. You going to get in the game and shoot a Hezzy pull-up? I've been in ex y'all exact shoes, y'all age as well, and think, okay, I'm going to work on my step back, work on my Hezzy pull-up. And then you get into a game, and it's like, oh, I'm not shooting that shit. Right? I'm not shooting that shit. Not, not just because this is not in our offense, but just because 
in terms of fundamental skill, I'm incapable of shooting this and actually being able to knock it down at a clip that's 35%, which is just average for a game. Meaning when you go and do it in workout, you have to do it in the ways that Twitch is going to allow you to get open, allow you to have the space, and then also have the balance and then be able to shoot it at a probably 65, 70% clip in the game speed as well. And so that's where you just got to be honest and say, okay, I got to take a lot of steps back, right? I got to take a lot of steps back and just work on the fundamentals. Once you work on the fundamentals, work on the basics, it's going to make learning the Hezi pull-up 10 times easier. Because once I mastered, like, essentially got really good. Let me not say master, because I don't know if I can really master that. But once I got really good at shooting off the catch, and then I learned how to dribble separately, and then I brought them all together, the amount of time it took me to be able to build a package off the dribble to shoot was way shorter than the amount of time it took me to build the fundamental. It probably took me one-fifth of the time it took me to build the fundamental skill in itself because I've now learned two concepts separately, merged them, and it just it's just easier, right? There's just maybe little minute details I'll have to sharpen up in between, but ultimately it just took way less time to where it's like, oh, this shit is easy. I just need to get some a few reps up. Right. And I now also know how to work. I still know how to work hard. I know how to work smart. So picking up these skills just got easy. So learn the fundamentals, bro. Y'all got to learn the fundamentals. Do you know what is Pure Sweat Basketball program? Uh, I've heard of the program, but I've never I've never bought anybody's program, by the way. I've never bought anybody's program. So. All the things you see me do, all the workouts I'll, I'll have, I may I may have. I may have kind of. It may have been rooted from somewhere else and what I've seen someone do, right? But um, for the most part, it's not like I'm just taking somebody's entire program or some shit and then like bringing it right back to y'all. Like I ain't doing, I ain't doing some shit like that. It's all shit that's essentially I'll get creative with things that work for me, things that mentally for me that kind of click in my head. You know what I'm saying? So I could be able to actually teach it and then show y'all how to get the results coming from my position. So let me get this stuff uploaded though. Or opened up, not uploaded. Chris Gatlin workouts. Uh, I've heard of Chris Gatlin before. The name sounds familiar. I'm not really sure exactly who he is, but it sounds familiar. I, I really don't be in tune, bro. <laughs> I really don't be in tune, bro. Um, I hate that my games aren't being recorded. Ask your mom to record for you. You got a parent that goes to a game? Your brother, your, your pops, um, cousin? All you need is this and a tripod. You know, all you need is this and a tripod. And the tripod costs about $20, $25. You could record all the games yourself. Somebody can, even a pair, someone on the team, right? Someone on the team's parent. You, y'all got to even understand this. Every single team got that one parent who's old, who's overjoyous, who's always happy, who's always just wants to be around the team, see their kid play, right? And so if they're going to every single game, why not ask them, Hey, could you be able to record our games for us with this tripod and then maybe your son's phone or my phone? And then so we could be able to look back at this and get better. So as we go forward, we could win games and your son could get better. I could get better. We could just share this with the team. Do you ever think about solutions like that? Have you ever thought of that type of solution? Stop playing victim and get in and, and, and abolish the system. Do what you need to do to be able to get to where you want to go. Discipline or regret. You choose. Y'all got to lock in, bro. Y'all got to lock in. I've been telling y'all this for a while. Y'all just got to start doing shit yourself instead, instead of relying on people to be able to get the things that you need to get done, done. Because in reality, you can do it yourself. Hey, give me one second, Game Day. Give me one second. Let me post this on the story. Let me post this on the story right quick. Let me post this. Got Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green. Hold on. Let me get this posted up right quick. Actually, I, oh, hold on. Let me get go to here. Hold on. Let me get it better. Better recording. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me one second. Give me one second. Got to get this for the Instagram story. Boom, 
hold on. Give me one second. One sec. Boom. 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 Also, let me put that up there right quick. There we go. Turn that off. All right, boom. Uh, I hear what you're saying. What's the difference between expanding your gaming skills versus working on, on game skills? I mean, those are one and the same. Where you you expand your you expand your game and skills by working on the skills that you'll use for a game, right? You think about what am I gonna do in a game? What am I? What the what are the spots I'm gonna be in? What am I good at? And then now what position what positions you know what I'm saying am I gonna be in? And then now you go to your individual workouts and you work on the things as to what you're gonna do. Simple as that. Simple as that. And how do you expand your skill set from back back to basket more face up? You gotta really understand. Do I even need back to the basket? Do I need that face up, right? First and foremost, you gotta kind of un even understand the concept of that. Am I really gonna use this? Is this in our offense? Is this in my is this in my my talent, right? What is this in my what I do well? And then see, okay, what what? How do I feel in these certain situations? Like get yourself there, and sometimes you just gotta be honest and say, Am I really gonna be in this spot? Am I gonna be in this position? Am I gonna be in this situation? And so essentially, if you're trying to go from back to the basket to face up, face all face up is is triple threat, right? If you want to learn how to play face up, you got to learn the triple threat. So who, who do you who do you want to watch to learn the triple threat? Kobe, Melo, I'll even watch Kawhi, Jordan, right? I'll watch those guys in the triple threat just for the skill set, right? The, how to how to jab, how to read, how to trigger step how to cross step, how to pace certain moves, how to read help, like all those little things that you'll pick up from the triple threat. You don't have to have the same shots, but what you could pick up is those little details that will be effective across all all players, regardless of the height, regardless of the size, regardless of the position. So, Pat looking real cute today. Hey, chill, chill, chill. Hey, yo, 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 y'all bugging, y'all bugging, y'all bugging. But let's lock in, though. Let's lock in. Let's lock in. Breakdown about to get started right now. Breakdown about to get started. Let me turn that up right quick. Let me send a message in the Discord too. Let me send a message in the Discord. Let me send this. Boom. Drop that. Drop that. I haven't really looked at prospects really. I'm gonna keep it a bean. I haven't really looked at a lot of prospects. I haven't really looked at too many prospects. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna let, let what's going on right now. I'm gonna allow myself to be present because the thing is though, I even wanna think think about this right quick. Quick little tangent before we get started, right? People who always wanna focus on the future, focus on the mock drafts, don't really allow themselves to embrace and cherish what you have right now, right? It's always that those people who think too far forward and forget even what you have in front of you, right? People want to see the next prospect, but what if there's already a prospect right in front of your eyes? You just fail to see it, right? All these people always looking at, okay, next mock draft, this team, that team. Let me, I just want to see what's going on right now. Let me see how this, this season plays out. Let me cherish, you know what I'm saying, LeBron's 21st season. Let me cherish, right, all this great basketball being played, you know what I'm saying, the ascension of an Anthony Edwards. Let me cherish all these things that's going on, right? So now I don't, I don't look back and say, Man, I really undercut and under like undervalued how much I was actually getting. You know what I'm saying? It's important to understand what's about to come up, but not the time for that right now. I got to stay focused and locked down the season. And so I got two sections to this. The second, the second part of this breakdown, I'm gonna show some Taylor Hendricks clips because he be peeing us on the stream, he be peeing us on the breakdown. So of course, anytime I watch a Jazz game, I gotta watch his stuff. And so, but the first half, the first six minutes or so, is gonna be Van Vliet, Jane Green. Right, and so Van Vliet, small guard work, Jalen Green, slasher. And by the way, I don't even know if a lot of y'all peep, but ever since I dropped that last Jalen Green video, if you haven't seen it, he's been averaging about 27, 28 a game. And they've been on an eight-game win streak. So I don't know if I had something to do with it, but all I can tell you is that Jalen Green been going off since that video dropped. And so I even want to talk about Fred Van Vliet, right? Small, uh, uh, 
a lot of small guard concepts that are going to be within this video, right? And a lot of people overlook a lot of the things to which is readily accessible because they decide to be a victim of their hype, right? That's really a big problem with a lot of small guards, right? The biggest problem with small guards is that they see their hype, something that can't be taught, and they play a victim to that. But you look at somebody like Fred Van Vliet, he didn't allow his height to stop him from pursuing his dream. And now he's in the league making 40 mil and y'all got to pick up on these skills, right? So boom, I want y'all to understand this first and foremost, is that even as a smaller player, you can still draw fouls. It just boils down to the little details like this right here of Van Vliet, is that once he gets right in front of that three-point line, that's when he makes his go move. And now understand how he really even drew that foul and what y'all don't do so y'all don't get that foul is because a lot of y'all will end up making this go move right but your inside shoulder be off so once you end up getting here y'all decide to try to go out into space and play with speed van vliet keeps that on the inside turns it gets that into the defender so once this hand is there right you see the hand of his defender right there boom i go up and on top of the fact he's already moving he's not set i attack him going downhill i get a foul and i get to the free throw line skills that y'all could pick up on as small guards bro y'all y'all good y'all good right now y'all good y'all good but even understand this another way to get ahead of the curb as a small guard y'all got to be more active and being more active means being more conditioned watch van vliet as a defender right minute into the game or 46 minutes into the game he's still gonna be doing shit like this Right, picking up full court and just watch his overall level of activity to where even when he drops back day into a set, he switches, he's up. He realizes this person's not trying to score. So what do I do? Step up, use my hands, use all the length that I have. Pause, right? Pause. And now, boom, he gives that up. Hendricks got the ball in the middle of the floor. And so me being on that top side, what do I try to decide to do? Blow up the play and try to get a steal. I don't get it. Get out for the closeout. And that's a situation where a lot of y'all do get messed up. Y'all get out the play on that closeout, try to leak out. But regardless, look what Van Vliet does. Look what he does. Gets right back into play, give you that steal. The activity levels on a, on a player like Fred Van Vliet, something y'all got to pick up on. And now get out of transition, get Jalen Green that dunk right there. So y'all got to be active. Y'all got to be that level of active, act, active on, on defense. And then even on offense, bring energy. Play your play your hardest. Do whatever it is that you do that that you do best. And now another concept. I want you to understand. He had what thirty four. <laughs> Y'all gotta even understand. <laughs> At six foot in the NBA, right? Van Vliet had thirty four and has multiple games where he shot double digit threes. And the key to being a small guard and being able to get buckets is being able to play off the catch. But this one skill I can guarantee you is going to take your catch and shoot game to a whole nother level. Every single time Van Vliet shoots, he had 10 threes this game, by the way. Notice his base. Notice how low he gets, right? Watch. He gets low and he gets loaded. So once he catches, he's not dipping and then he's only going up. He's getting that shot up quicker. Less movement is going to make you more efficient because there's less room for error. And so watch how that continues to play out going forward throughout the rest of this breakdown. That, that shooting part, I'm, I'm telling you, that's one of the biggest gems. One of the biggest gems there is. Now let's talk about Jalen Green. He had 41. Now understand, Jalen Green had 41. And he's been able to get better at being a slasher and embracing the fact that he is a slasher instead of trying to always be pretty. And so when it comes down to Jalen Green, notice this move right here as well, right? That whole play, it wasn't, oh, I need to go and get a three. <laughs> Y'all got to... Y'all got to understand the mentality when it comes to plays like this. So, I want you to even understand, like I said, understand the mentality. So, as he goes down, just see the pace, right? See the pace. It's not until he gets right around the line that he decides to get into his breakdown move. And by getting to the line and making a breakdown move, he's not trying to seek a jumper. He's playing to his strength, which is being a slasher. So, now I hit him with the in and outs. He doesn't know which way to go. I get to the middle. Colin steps up on that left. I end up bringing the ball back to that right getting that late. He's playing more aggressive to the rim. He's playing more downhill. And that's why he's averaging about 27 over his last 10 games. Every time he drives now, indeed. Like, he's just playing, I'm getting to the rim. Like, plays like this is like, yo, 
I think he watched my video, bro. I think he might fuck around watch my video. But Pete does though. Understand, right? So understand. His strength is his athleticism, getting to the rim, slashing. And so even when he gets these two down screens, right? He catches. He has space. Defenders going under. But what does Jalen Green decide to do? He still decides to get to the rim. Cause just understand this, right? The only reason why he even slowed down here is what allowed Colin Sexton to do is now step up into the space as to which he went under. And now Jalen Green is going down while he is going up. And so now he has a lane going to the rim. Despite the fact he smoked it, that's also where you got to learn this concept as well. Where even when you get downhill, you build up a lot of momentum, especially from a stop. You got to disassociate your touch with your speed and your force. And that's how you're able to get these soft touches off the glass and actually get the lay. And that's what Kyrie does that's absolutely just unreal, which is kind of crazy. You see how fast you go sometime, boom, quick touch off the glass. That should be crazy. It'd be tough. Oh, where'd my mouse go? I can't find my mouse. <laughs> I'm tripping. But even peep this. I want y'all to peep these two things, even when it comes down to Jalen Green. We're not just going to talk about a scoring. We're going to talk about multiple aspects. So, Jalen Green is bringing this down in transition, right? Scan the floor. And this was a great read, right? He did recognize, all right, boom, we got the switch right here. I'm not going to try to attack John Collins, who's a big. I'm going to give it to Jabari Smith, who's our four with the smaller player down low, right? So, great job recognizing this, getting the spacing right there if I'm in. And now, I'm going to throw that pass into the post. But what are you going to do now once that pass gets thrown into the post? Watch Jalen Green, right? And I ain't going to lie. Hey, I, I heard some shit. Rashad McCants was talking about some, oh, he don't play off the ball well. Well, I ain't going to lie. He don't. I ain't gonna lie, he don't. I don't know if Jalen Brown does much as well, but I know Jalen Green don't be great at it. Because when this pass gets thrown here, what ends up happening, he just stood right there outside the three-point line, even though he didn't get doubled. You gotta understand this. You gotta really understand this. Because if Jalen Green, instead, is deciding to stay 35 feet out and said, all right, let me get here, set a cross screen, right? And then when I set this cross screen, I slip into this middle. When Dylan Briss clears out, make sure we got this spacing all right. I could get down into the paint and I could activate my slashing ability. Little plays he could do like that, that will take their team to another level. All because he got a mismatch don't, don't mean you just got to sit there and watch him cook. Now, once again, I understand this. Now, a part of getting to the rim, one thing you cannot avoid is contact. And now peep the contact, the little bit of contact that he got right here on this play, right? So we cut to his right side and right there. That just impedes the rhythm of Taylor Hendricks so that he can't be able to get a clean jumping platform to go there and get that block. So now, boom, he gets there, gets a good angle on that right side, he gets that late. It sometimes just takes this much, right? Just sharp angles that'll get you the angle that you need to be able to get your bucket. And I want y'all to peep this about Fred Van Vliet. Let's go back to Fred Van Vliet right quick. Go back to Fred Van Vliet. And so, if you're a small guard, you're probably going to end up playing point guard all the time, if not oftentimes being a combo guard, whatever it might be. And so, this is one thing as to which y'all got to abandon and follow Fred Van Vliet and his ways and what he did here. Because he gets right, boom, cuts into this middle. V Dylan Brooks missed the catch. But notice what Van Vliet's going to do. Notice his body language, right? I don't think y'all understand that. Y'all, a lot of y'all hoopers don't even understand because what a lot of y'all point guards would do is that when y'all get into this middle of the floor and you throw a pass to a teammate that's open and now slips out their hand and you get called for the turnover, you would go on defense, hang your head, and be mad at your teammate because you got the turnover. Watch what Fred Van Vliet does because this is what y'all got to do, right? Look, even though he did turn it over, I get back on the other side. I'm not hanging my head. I'm not mad at my teammate. I'm not cursing. None of that. It's just the game. Shit happens. And now here with Jalen Green. Jalen Green, his ISO game, he been getting smarter with his ISO game. Right? He been getting smarter with his ISO game. At ISO game. And so this is the type of ISO I really like to see out of Jalen Green, right? Because even though what's ultimately going to transpire is somewhat a tough shot right a snatch back step back into the mid-range he actually used his strength as gravity right because instead of sitting on the perimeter playing sizing up tween to just pull up he tween 
attack the rim, force Sexton to break his base, and now I snatch back, I create space, and I get into that shot. And those are the type of shots that he's got to seek, where he's actually using the rim for gravity to be his defender. And so now little off-arm details like this, where he got the speed, just peek this. Little, little guidance, little guidance. It just be the small things, right? Just a little guidance. Let him to where he just, to where he can be able to get some space. Uh, Aaron Holiday is also a good example for small guards. Yeah, he is as well. They He built just like Fred Van Vliet too, which is the funny thing. <laughs> they built the same, just playing backup. <laughs> he just playing backup. Hold on, let me see. Did I even respond to this? Do you sometimes wish you knew some things about basketball early? I mean, you could have had a good career, but I think you could be a good coach. Not The thing is, I don't regret anything because it's brought me to exactly where I am right now. And I would not trade for where I am right now to be able to try to fix something of my past because I don't know who I'll become, right? I don't know who I'll be. And so for me to say, oh, I wish I would have knew all these concepts in basketball when I was at the age of 16, is just impossible. It's just simply impossible. It requires experience. It requires just life. It requires all, like, just living for me to be able to consume this information. And so unless I was sitting here miserable, like, man, I really want to hoop. I still got hoop dreams. I'm sitting here with hoop dreams, like, as I'm doing these streams. I don't got no hoop dreams. You know what I'm saying? Like, I enjoy hooping. Don't get it twisted. I enjoy hooping. But I'm not sitting here saying, bro, my career is cut short. I'm mad, bro. Like, I got to just find another way to try to make some shit. Not nah, like, no, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm completely, I'm the utmost satisfied to where I am now. So if I were to try to say something before, I wouldn't be who I am today. Why would I try to change that? <laughs> That's where people, a lot of people get it twisted. Being able to find beauty in the struggle and everything as to what you do, regardless if it's, you look back and it's like, oh, I could have been better had I did that. But doing that allowed me, or doing that bred me to become who I am now. So as uh, 16 not, are not cooked yet, I mean, you should, I mean, if you think you cooked, you're going to be cooked. Y'all got to understand that. If you think you cooked, you're cooked. Because what it comes down to is your own belief in self, right? If all your beliefs are negative and saying, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to do this, I'm not able to do that, right? You're not going to be able to do it. Simple as that. You got to understand how this universe works. What is this universe? This universe is you inverse. Y'all got to understand that. That's a gem as to which I was living by on the day-to-day -day basis when I really began to realize what goes on within my mind, what, go, what, what I believe, what's going on within me spiritually is the exact reality I'm going to live, right? And the second y'all really begin to realize that, y'all got to really change how you, how you perceive things, how you just live, how you, your, your belief in self and the perspective you have on certain things. Because there's always a positive and then there's always a negative, right? It's always going to be like that. Every single atom in our body has a positive and a negative. That's why there's the God. That's why there's God. And that's why there's a devil. Positive, negative, good, bad, good, evil, right? You just take an O, add it to God, that's good. You take away the D from de devil, that's evil. So like all these little things, what side are you going to choose, right? What side are you going to choose? You're going to choose discipline, right? Or are you going to choose that regret? Where discipline is you just committing to something, committing to a process that's going to allow you to get to where you want to be, allow you to get to where you're here to be and continue to follow along with your purpose. And ultimately, if you don't even know that now, just commit to something. I know it, life is going to be able to show you the direction you must go. But ultimately, what side are you going to choose? So I don't even know where that even started. But yeah. Uh, so uh, you fuck with. Oh, yeah. You say you cook. I'm like, bro, you, it's all what you think. It's all what you think. You fuck with Elliot could do. Yeah, Elliot could do. I have a few. I, do I have a I have an Elliot could do breakdown here. But yeah, I don't really know him like that. I don't really know him like that. But like in terms of just like a outside of basketball but it's game cool the only thing holding him back is scoring you know what i'm saying the only thing holding him back is scoring he's gonna have to learn how to score if he wants to be able to really be be able to thrive at the next level and even in college because he could pass his ass off but the shooting and the like the package the scoring package and shit like that that's where it gets tough so how old am i i'm 20 i'm 20 i think i have potential i mean if you it's, it's one thing to think but another thing to know because once you really begin to realize we are infinite beings in an infinite world with infinite intelligence, meaning that what we're capable of doing is abundant. There is no limit, right? There literally, y'all got to understand this, right? When you look at, say, uh, uh, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, each and every single day, they're getting better, right? The only thing that kind of regress 
is their their physical body, right? But in terms of skill, they're getting better, right? And if they're getting better every day, what really is their limit, right? What really is their limit? The only thing that could kind of stop them is say they're they're cool as to where they've been. But I know that if they continuously go about and improve skill, there's no limit, right? So if there's no limit, that means there's no ways to which you could lack. There's no floor. And so there's no threshold as to which you could reach. It's just about daily progression, that slow progression, that slow grind, right? So you can be able to just get better day by day and be able to unlock essentially that potential because all your potential really is is how much mentally you limit yourself to. And if you always say, oh, I think I could only get here. I think the best I could be is to play college. The best I could be be is to be able to be a six man or something like that. You're going to automatically limit yourself and not be able to be at your fullest potential. Because it even goes back to analogy of this. I'm going to get right back to the breakdown. But if if a, if a tree, if it say an oak tree had the, had a mind of a human, it'll only grow to be five feet tall. Because the only thing that's stopping you is a fact that you're always thinking, right? Always thinking about the shit that could go wrong instead of the shit that could go good. Y'all got to begin to, like I said before, flip your mind from thinking negatively to thinking positively. And the only, it's, it's such a dumb of a concept. It's really so dumb. Right. Because we worry about some shit that hasn't even happened. And it's not even not even real. Right. The only thing that's real is the present. The future is not determined. Right. The future is not determined. It's not set in stone. The only thing what's going to determine your future is what you do with your present. And you fear the things that could happen in the future. Off of some shit that you, you're not even really impacting your present. And it's going to influence your present. if You always think about the fear because you're going to follow along that path. It's so it's, so, it's such a dumb concept. We fear things that aren't even real. And so once you begin to realize the only thing you have is the present and your present can formulate your future, then you're actually going to be able to take steps to actually grow and get better. So what type of films you say you recommend for smaller guards? If you're a smaller guard, watch all the smaller guards because you're going to be able to pick up on small guard skills. So Fred Van Vliet, seems like you're in the right place at the right time. You know what I'm saying? So seems like you're in the right spot. But even understand this as well. Understand this. Not even I worry about some shit that hasn't even happened. We worry about some shit that isn't real. <laughs> it, is, it isn't real. It not not Because when you say hasn't even happened, that could imply that it could happen. But it won't happen if you decide to focus on your present. And use your present to build your future. Y'all gotta understand, bro. This shit is not real. All those fears you got, all those insecurities you got, all the things you doubt, that shit, the, all the things, the things you may be embarrassed of, of the future, that shit is not real. It is not real, bro. I don't know why people worry about some shit that's not real. Because what you focus on expands. And if you always focus on that, you're gonna produce exactly that. And you can't get mad because you produce the thought. Uh, you produce the thought pattern to be able to do that. So it's like, you gotta only you can only hold yourself accountable, man. You can't point no fingers. Hold yourself accountable, but at the same time, it's one thing. The person I heard this the other day too. But before we go go back, this is one gem. Last gem we're going back to right back to this breakdown, right? Let me take that shit off because that's L promo. Um, so I heard this the other day. It said the person who points the finger at other people, who blames other people, is nowhere near to being there. Right, there's zero percent there, right? The person who decides to point the finger at themselves is fifty percent there. But the person who decides to say, I'm not gonna blame anyone else, I'm not gonna blame myself, but I'm going to see this thing as this is for what should happen, and this is what is gonna allow me to be able to grow, is a person who's fully reached that point of what's the word for it? Who's fully who's who's essentially kind of like maxed out, who's reached that full awareness, that full consciousness. Because when you begin to point fingers, right, whether it's at yourself, whether it's at somebody else, you begin to think about essentially the world and the community environment that you live in. And if you put the weight of something on somebody, you put the blame on somebody else, on somebody, it essentially could be a detriment because it's about the community. It's about everybody. And so if one person's feeling down, it's going to bring down everybody because a community is unity, which is you and I. And so if one person falls, the whole thing going to fall. So I heard that the other day and I was just like, huh, I can't always try to say, ah, oh, shit, that's your fucking fault. Why'd you do that? 
You just got to simply see things for what it is and understand that the universe is here to work for you and not against you. So right back to this breakdown, though, right? Boom. Right back. So Fred Van Vliet, you got to understand this. If you want to be able to thrive as a small guard, you got to understand what you're about to step into in actions before you get into it. And so with this pick and roll, Landell going to his right side. You got Collins who guard, guarding Landell. Jazz been playing the drop coverage. And so understanding that, I can now get into this bag right here. Pull up threes, right? And so as I even get into this push cross, right? As I even get into this right here, I'm just reading, looking at John Collins. How far up is he? Do I have room for a shot? I got the room I pulled at. And so when you know exactly what to read according to what coverage you got, that's how you're going to be able to maximize your scoring. Uh, I realize that I, I blame my teammates sometimes. I never realize what the, what the feel like and what that makes me look like. Yeah, that's also another thing. Like I said, you bring one person down, you bring everything down. And so um, ultimately what you just got to do is begin to seek solutions and not seek problems. A lot of people today are problem seekers. A lot of people are blame seekers, right? They just want to they just want to look at some point the finger, look at everything, everybody else and be mad. But you got to seek the solutions. Because like you even said, hold on right quick. Um if you always blaming your teammates but not providing those solutions, how the fuck are you going to get better? How? Because you see, that that's the problem with the blame game. When it comes down to the blame game, if I always point the finger, whether it's at me or somebody else, that it distorts, right? It distorts our ability to be able to f uncover what we must do to improve, right? Especially just to the, to the regular person. So the person who is wise will be able to say, okay, I did this wrong, now I can improve and get better at this. But a lot of people just simply leave it at blame and they just say it's my fault or it's your fault, but they don't have action to be able to to fix their faults. That's where the shit gets bad. And that's why the, the, the blame game is not something that should be done. So, yo, what's good, Leo? What's good? Basketball teaches you life. Uh, I have a dream. I have a dream guy. I have some OGs like I have some OGs in here. I got some OGs like Z be popping up like every stream. Um, whoever else like been here since like I was streaming on Twitch with like three viewers, right? Got some people who've been here OGs for a long ass time, but y'all, y'all, y'all who be consistent, of course, y'all, y'all up there for sure. Y'all up there for sure. And I'd even say, even with Z, I don't think y'all even realize. Uh, he be pulling up at the start of streams. I don't even know if he's still here, but he been subbed. He was subbed to me on Twitch for like six months. And then he even subbed to the membership on here for like another two, three months. And so he really OG. Like, he not just sitting here chilling watching, but he been here since like, he, and he been supporting. You know what I'm saying? He actually been helping me further grow myself and grow my independence by actually subscribing and supporting. So, Z most definitely up there. What time is it over there? It's like 7 a.m. here in Australia. It's, five, it's about 5, it's 5.52. 5.52. Got Twitch because of you? Hey. That's lit. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let's get back to Van Vliet. We need a lock in. We need a lock in. We got still got like six minutes of clips left in this motherfucker, bro. We got a lot of time left. Like, man, chill, 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 bro. Chill, chill, chill. We got to lock in. We got to lock in. We got to lock in. All right. So going back to Van, Van Vliet shooting, right? So like I even said before, shooting off the catch is going to be your best friend as a small guard, right? And y'all got to have this skill. So Van Vliet gets this catch, right? Chris Dunn, baiting. And notice what he does. Pass fake. Look at his base. He's vertical. But what is he going to do before he shoots? Right back into that base. Because you need that for that energy transfer and that flow to get that shot up. And to just keep it smooth and fluid. Y'all need that. I guarantee you. Start doing that. Make sure you're loaded just like he was there on the balls of your feet. Your shot going to feel 10 times better. 2v2 sleeper watch. Depends on your priorities. I ain't gonna lie to you. It depends on your priorities. Do you got school tomorrow? What time you got to get up? Um, little things like that. Breakdown gonna be done about 30 minutes. So it's like, okay, boom. You can be out of here in like 30 minutes. So it'd be cool. I can stay. But I ain't, if y'all got to really get some sleep, you got to recover. I don't want you to get hurt because you stayed up too long or some shit like that. You ain't getting enough sleep. So also make sure y'all hydrated, bro. That's gonna help your. That's gonna improve your quality of sleep. It's gonna improve your recovery. It's gonna improve a lot of things. Like I don't even think y'all understand this. Let me drop this gem right quick. So y'all don't. 
if if you're dehydrated, you're 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 causing self-inflicted damage to your joints because the way is to which your joints even warm up, the way is to which they move is through syno uh, synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is now produced by the water that's within your body. So if you if you're getting to these workouts and you're dehydrated, your body doesn't have enough water, and now it's trying to scrape for whatever it is, whatever it is that's there, and it doesn't really have that that necessary quantity for you to be able to get into that workout, right? Because all this sweating, you're also losing water. Now your joints are gonna be your joints are gonna have more friction, and now that could even just lead to injuries, right? Knee injuries, hip, ankles, all this stuff. So y'all gotta make sure you stay hydrated because it's literally hurting you. You know what I'm saying? Causing self self-inflicted damage. Do basketball reactions not like uh, games, but like basketball analysis? Who venue Jimmy High Roller thinking basketball channels like that? Probably in time. I ain't gonna lie. Probably in time. Most definitely in time. I will. Um, just that I don't the the time. I gotta block off time for those certain things. You know what I'm saying? I may even do it in the future. Once like I even have the Patreon up. And like say I may not be be on stream just answering a, a surplus of questions the entire time. I could I could watch a um, thinking bass like what you call it, uh, mind of the game with JJ Redick and LeBron. I could maybe watch that on stream. I may even watch it multiple times. I ain't gonna lie. I may watch it off stream and watch it on stream again just because I need to see certain shit twice. But um, like I could watch some shit like that. I could watch JJ Redick. I could watch like anything like you said on there. Like react to those shit while, cause with the Patreon, that's why I'm be responding to all questions at all times throughout the entire day. So, thank you for everything. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. You do a free fan film breakdown or paid on the on the membership is about to be paid. On the membership section is gonna be paid, or not on the membership, but on the Patreon, it's gonna drop in about a week or so. And by the way, those basketballs I told y'all about. Hold on, I don't even know if I told y'all right, but the basketballs right, the basketball giveaway. The basketball giveaway, the DOR custom Wilson basketball, Wilson Evolution ball, they got shit. They ship me here to my crib today. I got two that I'm giving away. One I'm keeping for myself. And then once the Patreon drops, whoever enters and joins the Patreon will enter the giveaway for those two basketballs. And I'll be doing monthly giveaways in the Patreon as well. So you may even get your money back because say I may end up giving away a pair of Kobe's. Maybe I give away two pairs of jaws. Maybe I give away another basketball. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? You may even get your money back. You know what I'm saying? So whoever also joins the Patreon, once it drops, they get right back into it. They enter in the, enter in all giveaways. I'm doing monthly giveaways. So be on the lookout for that as well. But Pete, this. Let's go back to Jalen Green. Let's go back to Jalen Green. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he said that shit. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember that shit. I ain't gonna lie, that shit was rough. That shit was rough. That shit was rough. But even peep this though, right? Peep this as well. So, going back to Jalen Green playing off the ball, right? Notice his spacing at this point in time. And so once Dylan Brooks gets here, he's still 35 feet out, right? So he's not even a threat really at this point. And so even once he gets here, pulls in help, look where he's he is when the ball gets thrown. He could even step into a catch and shoot shot. And so ultimately, he did end up making it way harder than it had to be. And he did make the shot, but it's about habit, right? You don't want to have to take those shots when you're playing against really competitive teams on nights where you're not as hot as you were this night against Utah. It's about habit. I also want to talk a lot about habit for the rest of the stream as well. Habit is going to be a big thing, big thing going for the rest of the stream. So even understand this. Everything I even say should become habit, right? When you hear something that's to which y'all really resonate with and can help you get better, ingrain that. Really think about that habit. Drill that in. So peep this as well, right? Understand. Another important concept when it comes to just playing off the catch, right? You got Dylan Brooks, got into the paint, got two. Swing here. Jeff Green didn't even bring the ball down. Kept a high swing. Jalen Green kept a high swing. Now watch what Fred Van Bleet does, right? When the pass gets thrown, He's moving further left with the pass and moving with the rhythm of the ball. And so now what this causes the defender who's going to be in rotation to do is to now end up stepping middle. And now he's going to have to rotate even further to be able to get to Van Vliet and get a contest. And that little bit of distance is going to make a biggest, biggest change because even on Chris Dunn as well, right? If he decided to stay in the same spot right here and Chris Dunn rotated, he probably would have got a hand up on that. But Van Vliet behind the line, far behind the line as well at that, knocks that down, 
So y'all got to learn how to use your feet and use the ball to get rhythm into your shot. Um, how much is it to answer the Patreon? The, I think the first tier, the the lowest tier for the giveaways is going to be 13. 13, I think. I may try to see see other see other things I could do, but I think it's, as of right now it's at thirteen. But um, can you use that extra space to accelerate downhill? What play are you talking about? This space? I mean, he can, he can. He's just playing off a of field. He's just playing off a of field. So when you're playing off a of field, I can't really knock a lot of shit because the shots that you take that are gonna feel the best is comes when you're playing off a of field and not trying to think so much. So can't really question that. So, I want y'all to even peep this as well. I'm going to go 0.5. So, understand. Remember how I was talking about activity being a small guard defensively, right? It's not just activity that Van Vliet has. It's also IQ to where once he has to go close out a number eight from this offensive rebound, understand how well he's going to be able to use his hands in this situation. Because he pump fakes, boom, second dribble right there, boom, give me that. 2K steal. But understand how he even got the steal in itself. Because... Are these dribbles really important? Tell me, do that? Do these dribbles that he takes have purpose? So he gets here, watch, pump fake, dribble here. Next tween, send the same spot. So now he knows he could be able to make that reach because he's not dribbling with his guard up. He's just chilling, relaxing. So now, boom, hands active, give me that steal. And now once again, Jalen Green in transition, we getting these easy tools all day, giving us momentum. Can't shoot from there. That means I mean, it ain't no bad thing. You can't do it. It's not about what you can do now. It's about what you're gonna be able to do later. Now, are you gonna be able to layer your game properly so now you can be able to do the things that's greater later, or are you gonna try to be the person who takes a huge step back and just jumps back straight to the difficult shit? You gotta go bit by bit. I ain't even trying to. I ain't even trying to spit bars right now. I don't even know how this shit even came about. But once again, though, like I told y'all, was shooting this shit with Fred Van Vliet. Y'all even understand. I don't even think Pete, Pete Van Vliet though, right? So understand, Pete Van Vliet. I don't even think y'all understand how deep of a shot this is in the NBA. That shit's 35 feet or so, depth procession throwing you off, right? A lot of y'all don't even understand the fact of that. Y'all just so accustomed to shooting in gyms, right? But even on a shot like this, y'all wonder how could someone be able to just catch this, step in slow, and be able to shoot from this deep? How do you get enough energy and power to be able to knock that shot down? It boils down to one thing. It boils down to one thing, I guarantee you. Y'all could probably already guess it. Y'all could probably already guess it. This one thing gonna take your shot and turn it from being shitty to being elite. Watch. That base. Y'all need that base. If you don't have a base, it's gonna be hard to be able to transfer energy from the bottom, from your feet then all the way to the tips of your fingers and be able to have a good follow through and good release. It's vital. Y'all need to add it. Y'all need to add it. Uh, Katie says he's the best uh, he is the best passer he ever played against. Wait, you talking about um, Van Vliet? He played against? That's tough. I, I mean, I can't knock that. If KD said it, KD, shit, KD said it, shit. I can't say nothing about that. I don't have the strength for that. That's why you got to build the strength. You got to build the base. And you know how you're going to build the base? Get in the Patreon because I'm dropping week outs on workouts weekly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm showing y'all the functional strength training. I'm going to show y'all all that stuff. How to actually properly stack your layer, stack and layer your workouts so you can be able to build strength. And not even just that. I even forgot to mention. I'm going to put nutrition details on there as well so y'all could be able to recover better so even be on be on the lookout for that y'all getting so much just in a package for what 13 dollars a month y'all that's the same that's food for thought i gotta understand it's food for thought y'all go to go to a fast food spot get a whole meal 13 15 dollars and that's just the meal that's gonna get you through what the next six hours until you have to eat again whereas you could put that same thing into say a patreon where you're gonna gain knowledge as to what you've never had and you don't have that's going to be able to take your game to the next level it's food for thought cost the same as two number threes that's what J. Cole said uh, it's a fact he was hydrating his joints are healthy chill nigga trying to stretch concepts bro 
<laughs> nigga trying to stretch concepts, dog. <laughs> he's he's gonna be hydrated. His joints was healthy, bro. I mean, shit, that water could help with that fluidity with them joints. Cause sometimes you be like, oh, my knees don't feel right, so that'll throw off your fluidity. So you ain't too far off, though. You ain't too far off. You ain't that far off. And you peep this. Uh, Forty to twenty-one is crazy, bro. They was hot. That's what I'm talking about. It's habits. It's habits. They was getting cooked. They was getting cooked. But even peep this, understand this as well, right? Understand this defensively. Look, <laughs> this is kind of funny though, right? So if you're an undersized guard, you're going to get beat sometimes. You got to face the fact. You got to accept it, right? And so situations like this, you chase over the top, you behind him, and now you got a big man right here. You can't do shit with the ball if it gets thrown over, right? He gets behind this. So either you do nothing or you just do this. You just foul him, right? So he doesn't even get to the free throw line. He doesn't get the layup. Those are smart fouls that you got to pick up as a guard. Those are the fouls you pick up. Not the bullshit ones where you're always reaching and trying to... You may get a couple of those, right? But you got to reach intelligently like I showed y'all before. But those are the ones that's to which you just got to intentionally foul. Right? Don't try to knock somebody on their ass, on their head, on their back. But what you got to do, though, is make sure they don't get that easy, too. That's smart fouls. Smart fouls. Most of the time, you read my comment uh, minutes ago. Where is it at? Okay, yeah, I, I read it. I read it. I said I can't I can't knock what KD said. If he said you're the best passer he played against, he is. You know what I'm saying? I can't say KD's wrong. <laughs> Fuck, that's 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 what reporters be doing. That's what media be doing. They be like, KD said Van Vliet is the best passer he played against. Is that true? Nigga, shut the fuck up. You, you, ain't, you ain't played against him before. That's his opinion. It's objective. <laughs> I'm like, yo, that's dumb, bro. That's so stupid. Like, one argument, there be people trying to debate somebody's objective opinion of someone who literally played the game and that's a question as to which you cannot be wrong it's so dumb shit like that just be so dumb but even peep this as well i'll be talking about that i'll be talking about this all the time right this was one of the shots that i added when i was in high school as a small guard that got me a shit ton of clean looks and y'all should do it too right so watch van vliet he does end up getting a bad pass thrown out of his pocket right which forces him to slow down his pace but watch these steps right here, right? He catches, slows it down for a second, and notice what that did to John Collins, right? This is really magnificent to use on handoffs, right? On handoffs, whether it's a bad pass or good, right? Or a good handoff, good, great to use. So watch, look at John Collins. He catches, slow stepping, he stops, he pulls up, defender still behind the play, and now he gets that shot. I promise y'all gonna be able to get that shot off. And in handoffs especially, stepping left, right, right, left, I promise that done got me cool nine points in the game at times. Got probably got that shot off maybe twice a game. Really. Got that shit off twice a game. And I really I me personally, that right left, that shit per that that's for me stepping in right left into to a fade, that shit feels so nice. I don't know how people always go over the left and can't really go over the other shoulder, but maybe it's just how my body works. But I really do like going that direction. And out here too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all to even understand. Even understand this. Now, even in transition, even with built up speed, you know Van Vliet is hot. But what's the one thing that's always going to be maintained, right? Look, base, even with the speed, and now also shoot him from deep because he can't get hugged up on the line because I am a smaller guard. Y'all gotta even practice how to shoot uh, maybe a foot or two behind the line that you use and then even if you're not comfortable with that if your form is inconsistent make sure you get your base tried again and if that even if with the base it still doesn't feel right you got to now go back into the paint and work on the fundamentals and make sure you build the right muscle memory so now even he pulls that from the a in toyota and you know where it's going in the hole and i hear a jalen green hold on hold on hold on hold on yo what's good iq what's good iq this is really a gem right here. Uh, Patreon, you have a workout with a little gym equipment or adjustable exercises. It's gonna be it's gonna be with equipment that's very much accessible, like just dumbbells or even if you don't have dumbbells or anything at all, you could probably do some of the shit body weight. And I'm gonna make sure, like consciously, I'm not gonna do a whole bunch of like say trap bar stuff or T bar stuff or anything like that. If anything, I'll do that on my own days. But the videos I record for y'all, those are gonna be stuff as to which. Um, is gonna be with equipment that's accessible. So, um, but 
what do I do to find an open gym so I can get my shots up? It's been tough to find one in my area. I mean, you got to ask around. Um, find an outdoor court. Honestly, if you don't got a gym, get an outdoor court. Y'all be sleep on the outdoor courts, man. Y'all be sleep on the outdoor courts. Damn, flashbang. Ah, shit. Uh, you got any workouts with you recommend for Hoopers or people is fine? I don't, not necessarily. Like, splits by the week. I'll probably even put a split on the Patreon. I'll literally put the splits on the Patreon, too. I'll put all the little details, bro. I'm putting everything into that. The way I train and the way as to which I've been able to get better, y'all going to get everything on there. Uh, Hold on. Let me get some water. My mouth getting dry. Uh, bench and squat probably like I said dumbbells bro I could do a whole I could do my entire vert program with only dumbbells I can guarantee you now the weight of them I'll work with, with, with what you got but I I could guarantee you that I could do like entire shit with just dumbbells bro as long as you may have like just some maybe plates y'all could be able to use for like the little dumbbell hand dumbbell plates you could put the weights on and like have the little clips on it um, barbell as well and if y'all don't even have a barbell probably do some sort of dumbbell variation I'll throw in there if you don't have that so even Pete this as well right I want to talk about Jalen Green his, his little package right here so understand if you're a player with a fast twitch this is the perfect package for you watch Jalen Green right watch Jalen Green notice boom tween look at his pace look that's perfect because now what you do you turned off your engine you turned off that fast twitch. So now if you want to get your shot off, you don't have as much force when you get into that step back and it's easier to control. And now you're shooting a balanced shot, no shoulder rotation, shot goes up and you can get your buckets. It all boils down to that balance and how much force you bring in and how much of that force can you really balance. That's the key. Now let's get back to it. Understand Jalen Green. He done had that had a few threes. I ain't gonna lie, the whole team was hot. You can see the score. 53 82. The whole team was hot. They was just I ain't gonna lie, I don't know if they was missing. So even at this point, a shot like that, that should just feel good. That should just feel good. Y'all gotta understand. So even with shots like this, after you hit that last one from that left side, even though you do have more forceful momentum, doesn't mean he can't control it at all times. Cause he knows how to get to a shot that feels good. And it feels so good that he lets it go and turns away before he even goes in. Turns away before he even goes in bucket. Now I want y'all to peep this as well. Hold on. This is a little small guard. This is small guard stuff. Small guard stuff. Let me go back one more time because this is a gym. This is a gym. Not a lot of people even tell you this. Not a lot. You probably never even heard this. This is vital. Y'all got to understand timing. And so let me turn this down. Boom. Understand. So as a small guard, it's going to be harder to see the entire floor at certain times, right? And so when Fred Van Vliet gets right, he now reads Taylor Hendricks. He ends up stepping over. Colin Sexton is also still outside the paint. So he thinks this role is still going to be there, right? Because this is what he could see right now. And so he doesn't have an angle to throw it, but he has to fake the pass and then he has to make the pass. But in the time he had to fake the pass and make the pass, the person who now has to tag is able to rotate all the way over to the nail. And now, boom, he jumps that pass. And so, just overall, in situations like this, you just got to understand, all right, what's the best way for me to get a quick angle on this? Can I go nutmeg on that, right? What can I do? Can I go over the top even, right? Like, what's the different angles I could be able to get in the situation? And then also, if I have to hesitate, let me not even try to make the play because now I give the defense, defense another opportunity. So now, boom, Sexton gets that, gets that steal right there, turnover. I'll peep this as well. Jalen Green and Van Vliet. Jalen Green and Van Vliet. So I'll peep this. Understand. So coaches, a lot of coaches will tell you never to do shit like this, right? Because it's a one-handed pass, super quick and all that. But it's really a vital skill that you need because what Jalen Green does here makes this read and has to just play in a flow and just has to get that ball in his hands to be able to get to his open teammate. And so now watch what Van Vliet does here, right? He gets this catch. Watch base every time it's every single time that's why he's able to be an efficient shooter i just had to show y'all his habit because habits really show 
how somebody is able to produce a certain result. And once y'all uptake the habit, y'all be able to produce a better result than you do right now. Quick thinking uh, how to pass on pick. Yeah, it is. It is a tough thing to do, which is why you just got to. You, you, you can't even think about it. You just do it. You know, you can't even really think about it. So Pete, this as well. Look. You got to understand, I ain't going to lie. We all got that one teammate who be like Jalen Green right here. I ain't going to lie. Because watch what he does. Ahmed Thompson gets left. He gives it to Dylan Brooks. They be so horny to get the rock that they don't even space the floor. So now when you got the rock and you trying to cook, what happens, right? Help defense is all stacked up. They're not even threat because they 40 feet out just waiting to get the ball. And now you got to kind of do some shit where it's like, ah, uh, I couldn't do my best because he fucked up my spacing. He fucked up the ingredients for me to cook. So I can't cook. And also this. Why don't y'all peep this? Jalen Green. Now, <laughs> y'all really got to begin to understand your body language as a player, right? Regardless of your position. And so Jalen Green in this situation, right? Picks up this loose ball, pump fake. A lot of decisions of hesitancy around this area. He turns it over. Watch what he does, though, right? Watch what he does. Right? Throws his hands up, gets behind the play, Sexton goes down. And now you're like, oh, they up 29. But guess what? I don't give a fuck. Why do I not give a fuck? Because it's not about that one play in itself. It's about the habit. It's about the habit. Because you're going to begin to play competitive teams going forward. And if you're instilling instilling and replicating bad habit right now, what do you think is going to happen when you play against a Clippers? When you play against a Thunder? Hey, Carvin, appreciate that sub. Appreciate that sub. But what do you think is going to happen? Same shit going to happen. You're going to be behind on these plays. You're going to let the pass play affect your present play. And before you know it, you may lose a game because of a couple possessions that you gave up on. So it's about the habit. And out here, too, this is just about learning your bag work. This is about just learning your bag. So understand this. Jalen Green, he's a slasher. He's been attacking the rim. And so they don't want to chase him over all the time because he's going to get to the rim. And so this is the type of shots he just really got to drill and get comfortable with and never hesitate with. Not to say that he doesn't drill it, but to say you just got to get more comfortable with it because that's what you're going to have. So that's just something as to which you could think, okay, before games, I'm going to make sure I get up these shots. Or when I'm working out by myself on an off day, get up these type of shots right here so I can be able to continue to expand my game. Uh, he has no floor. That's why he ain't shoot. He ain't shoot that. I mean, he could use a floater. He could, if he really does want to promote longevity, he should get a floater. Indeed, I think everybody should have a floater to an extent, because it, once you get a get a good floater, it's like a layup, bro. It really is like a layup. And so now, once again, understand, defensively as a small guard, right? They're gonna try to attack you. Now, what do you do in these situations, right? How are you able to ease the difficulty of this job by playing smart? So watch what Van Vliet does, right? He never tries to get chest to chest. He has one hand out. Taylor Hendricks goes for the bump. He embraces the bump. Goes for another bump, embraces that again, tries to get the reach. Watch what he does now. Two, third time's a charm. I pulled the chair. Fooled him. Even though he did end up getting that layup, a lot of players who are unbalanced like that are going to miss that. So that's a good defensive possession ultimately by Van Vliet. Because you did lead him into a very difficult shot. And now I want y'all to even understand this. Let's talk about finishing right quick. Has he, bro's been straight threes. <laughs> understand, this whole time, he's had 34 in this entire game. We didn't see straight threes. He said maybe he had two layups, one of the layup, this whole game. Right, so understand this. So when you're trying to actually finish at the rim, at this point, you're not going to finish that. You got Hendricks, 6'10", 6, 6'11". 6, you got Collins on his weak, weak side, both um, plus wingspans. So now at this point, instead of trying to say, how can I finish at the rim? How can I be able to get space? How can I use the fact that they're chasing me? Where can I get to to get a clean look? And that's why small guards also need that floater. Because you're not going to be able to get these finger rolls and these lays around the rim. Just because you're so small. And then also, you may not be blessed with, say, having a Ja Morant level of athleticism now defensively again defensively again in situations like this 
these probably be some of the toughest defensive possessions because you got somebody attacking you downhill with a head of steam. So it's important that at any time, of course, you, util you utilize your feet. You learn how to move your feet. And then when you do move your feet, show your hands. Keep your hands clear. And now even once you, once you move the feet, once you show the hands, you can then even use the hands if you get out of position, like Van Vliet does right there, gets that swipe. And now they ended up using the challenge again, that call overturned. So learn how to actually move your feet. Learn how to show your hands, play proper and correct defense, and then be able to then use your hands and be able to get to the ball at points in which you know the ball is exposed. Now, once again, go back to Jalen Green right quick. Go back to Jalen Green right quick. Understand, it's important that as a player on the attack, you utilize ranges to be able to get to your angles. And so when he gets this catch, right, Taylor Hendricks, what does he do? He steps up so he can be able to get over the screen that Ahmed is going to set. But this is now going to set him up going forward for the rest of the play because that's not his natural gap in range to guard as a defender. So now he has a lane going downhill. Now we can create that space. You saw everybody also plugged in. So he stops. Now he goes back, brings Taylor Hendricks forward. Still hasn't established a range, right? As a matter of fact, he's also out of his base. So now Tween makes him think I'm getting to a drive, bring back into a shot. And he uses that space that was there and was created from the stop because he didn't even know the range. And now here too, hold on, hold on, hold on. This are the plays that shows Jalen Green is playing patient and he's actually making reads, right? He catches, he's chased, he's not trying to curl into a three, he's now trying to get into the paint. So what does he do? Cross step, plug, plug, bring back, but I'm not just going to stop and bring it back. I'm going to go into the lane because that stop only forced the help defenders to open up that gap. And now I could actually get through there and get that late. And then, boom, he didn't even get that late. He tried to dunk that shit. That shit was shit, wild. Wow. Got the foul called up. But plays like that, you actually making reads and making moves according to what you're seeing. Now defensively, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to talk about this more a little bit later. But I have probably like two pages of notes talking about how to score on defenders like Jalen Green. <laughs> There's one, there have been times where I just do my little basketball tangents and study how to certain players guard so I know what type of bag to use when I go against them. But that's some shit that, that I told y'all I may make a book on how to score on any type of defender. And then y'all may see that shit in the future. So just say that's not going to be anytime soon. Like I said, it's not going to be anytime soon, bro. But that's one thing. But let me go back to this just overall, right? He did use his strengths properly. So understand this. In a situation like this, you got a five-inch height differential, probably also 20, 30 pounds, right? Mismatch. But watch what Jalen Green does. He doesn't try to play with his chest. He doesn't try to play strong. He's using speed. He's using his quickness so that Taylor Hendricks can't get a feel for him. And so what ends up happening is that Hendricks gets this catch, He's still not trying to allow him to bump. He's still not trying to play physical because that's not his forte, right? So what does he end up doing, right? Plays with this gap, balls in the front of his frame. Give me that, right? Try to rip through. But if you want to be able to score on a player like Jalen Green, you got to play physical, right? He doesn't like the physicality. What he does like to do is play, play, play in space, use his speed. But if you're not trying to seek contact on him, you're not going to allow him to be. You're not going to be able to score. All right, it's going to be way tougher too. And now even this right here too, in transition, body language once again, hard pass gets thrown. It does be tough, but sometimes you got to make sure if you do express that emotion right there and then, you leave that emotion right there and then. You don't carry that shit into the next play. So if you're going to be expressive, so be it. But don't allow that shit, don't allow that shit to carry over. And now even understand this, this is a topic, but does a um, slight pelvic tilt uh, affect my game? Probably, you should do some more research on it. Probably should do some more research on it to see its overall impact in movement as a whole. But understand this as well. Van Vliet defending again. This is not just offense, how do I get buckets? How could you guard as a small player, right? As a small guard. So boom, right here, he's on the ball, right? Boom, switch on the Hendricks. Now you remember what happened last time, he got scored on. Despite the fact that he did end up hollowing him out. And this is what you got to do at any opportunity as a small guard. Which is when you do get these switches, 
Now, you off ball switch, right? And luckily, the ball was too late to be able to read who was open. And now I made that skip. Van Vliet gets that close. Hand up. And ultimately, they end up getting that stop. So you got to really learn how to off ball switch. That's going to be key for y'all small guards. And now here too with Jalen Green. I want you to understand who's right here, right? Understand. So since you got this pick and roll, and you got Walker Kessler who's in this little drop. And what ends up happening? Jalen Green, he gets past him. But you understand Walker Kessler is a shot blocker. So when you get to the rim, understand he's going to be chasing, right? He's going to chase. And so once you get here, you can't have time to be able to double clutch in the air because he's chasing. And so you got to make sure whatever finish you get into, you don't double clutch and you got to just go up. Because if you double clutch, you give him time to be able to go time that block, which he does right there and then. So that's just something you can ultimately avoid once you know you get past shot blockers. Don't double clutch. They're going to be able to catch up. And out here as well. People, little, little details, little details. Little details right here with Jalen Green, right? Remember how I was talking about he needs to turn off his motor before he shoots? That's what the skip right here is about to do. Watch, right? Skips into that, slows him down, allows himself to get squared up. He also has that good base right here, right there, loaded, ready to shoot, just only going up. And now it goes up, less movement, more efficient. He gets that bucket. And now once again, he's hot though. He was getting hot crazy. So at times he was seeking that three in transition. And that's when you could rightfully do so when you're hot. Just to clarify that. Just to clarify that. And now same concept like I said in the pick and rolls. Remember what I said in the pick and rolls, right? Understand what's going on here. Van Vliet gets off the screen. Keontae George, you got another wing who was guarding the screener, right? So he goes out into space. He can't use that drop coverage bag. But now with the different screen coming from the five man, I have the drop coverage. So now what could I do? Get into my step-ins wide off the screen because that's a drop coverage. So now I get into that bag right there and then. So you must understand what coverage you're going against before you decide how you're going to go and attack. And now here too. You got a couple more clips with just Van Vliet. Just Van Vliet and Jalen Green. So I talked about this concept. If y'all watch my Apollo breakdown, I think that's my votes view live stream. My Apollo breakdown from last uh, from Friday. But understand, right? I talked about this concept a little bit in my Apollo stream last time. But Apollo was 6'10", and he could be able to hook certain passes over defenses. Being a small guard, you can't do that same thing, right? You have to find more creative ways to be able to get that pass over defenses. And so in this situation for Van Vliet, he's getting right. This is the person that you must read on this tag, and this is the person you must get the pass over. And so now, like I said, he can't be able to get here and hook this. He's too small. So he has to find creative ways like this. Dribble, boom, jump pass, skip it to the corner, right? To where I could get that pass up quick and give the defense minimal time to be able to pre-rotate to a pass they already see coming. Uh, okay, was low because see throughout the plan, or just. Hold on, you're getting too far ahead of yourself. Who said they even in the playing right now, man? <laughs> they, they, they ain't even in the playing. You got you getting too far ahead of yourself, man. Relax, 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 relax. Relax, man. <laughs> Golden State's still there, mind you. I'm just saying this for the NBA standpoint. I would much rather have a Lakers Warriors playing game. LeBron versus Steph playing game. 51st game uh, of their career matched up playing game than see LeBron go against Dylan Brooks. I, this is the NBA. This is the NBA. That's all I got to say, man. And you can, you still can't even doubt a Steph Curry to be able to pull off some wins to keep that 10 seat. I would like to see a little send a, like a little comeback story. You know what I'm saying? They get into the play-in. But it'll just be tough because you got to understand who you're going against for that 10 seat. You're going against Stephen Curry. You're going to treat every one of them up in the games like a playoff game, man. And the whole team is going to drain all on them dudes. So we'll see, though. We'll see. We'll most definitely see. But don't get, like I said, just don't just don't get too far ahead. Don't get too far ahead. But do I think he'll be able to keep it up? It's going to be tougher because he's going to see a level of defensive coverage he's never seen before. Because you know the Lakers are going to hone in, being the 9 seed. So you know they already know their coverage, their strategy. You're going against Braun and AD. So he, I don't even know if he's ever seen like a real 
locked in game plan like that before. It's all just been regular season, freestyling, going about things, you know what I'm saying? Just through the flow, especially in the later half of the season where teams not really giving a fuck too much. Like they may just see the game as, oh, just just going to play. Like they're not that focused. Regular season game. So especially a late regular season game, it get tough. Time will tell and I agree he's beginning a lot of buzz lately, I'm sure. Team will start playing playing on his film. And that's that's when Jalen Jalen Green's have to take another leap. Not just a leap in terms of being consistent with Shane Goon or with the full squad, but also he's gonna have there's gonna be another leap he's gonna need to take to be able to learn the game and be able to adjust accordingly. So only time times we're gonna be able to see, in time we're gonna be able to see how that, that goes and goes along, how we develop. So defensively, once again, I got a lot of shit on Van Vliet over here. I got a lot of shit, especially defensively. It's a lot of gems going on. So Notice Sexton, right? Calls off the screen. He don't want Reggie Bullock. I'll take Van Vliet. He's a small defender. And this is where, just as a small guard, I can't do the same shit I did last time to, uh, what's his name, number eight right here, where I was reaching when he was had the ball to dribble. This is Sexton, right? I just got to be disciplined here. Stay in front. And if I just stay disciplined, I stay in front, I could trust my teammates to be able to get here and also bring my help. Then I know that I'm not guarding alone. And y'all got to understand that. Where's my help? And trust your help as well. And now here too. This is another small guard gem. Oh, give me one sec. Give me one sec. Give me a small guard gem. Small guard gem. Y'all got to always understand this, right? As a small guard, you can never shoot the same shot every time. Because understand, right? Van Vliet gets off the screen. He's got Kessler in front of him. And now, if he wants to be able to shoot the same shot like he always does right here, it's not going to be possible because he's going to get his shit beat to the crowd, right? And so, notice how he has to shoot this shot. Notice. That shit about 20 feet in the air, it's almost out the frame, my guy. It's almost out the frame. And so, if you think I could be a small guard, shoot everything the same exact way every single time I shoot, that's not good. It's not logical, especially when you're going against competition. That is way taller than you. Say you could be, a, say, a small guard in high school going against 6'4 players, but if you're trying to get to pro, you get, got 6'8 dudes. Even in high school, you got 6'8 dudes, right? You're trying to shoot over them at times. You got to practice on this and not just try to chuck them up. You got to get comfortable with doing shit that isn't, that isn't the same, with being able to adjust, right? You got to get comfortable with being able to adjust. And so now, what ends up happening? Pure net. Pure tough bucket so understand that as well but hold on let me get let me we got one more one more breakdown to go we got one more breakdown we got some we got some clips with taylor hendricks we got some taylor hendricks clips and it's gonna be a lot of catch and shoot stuff catch and shoot jabs you'll again say he said i hope his son's still watching 12 years old young guard um best boss is watching you you just gotta you just gotta think the game man you gotta think the game. Basketball, 50% mental, 50% physical. That's the key when it comes down to it all. 50% mental, 50% physical. And if you don't got either one, you won't be able to thrive. But the one who has both, that's the one who's gonna be great. So uh, he even said a small guard, you need an elite three. You do. Indeed, you need an elite three. Because where else are you really gonna be able to score? At the rim? <laughs> good luck. Consistently, good luck. Mid range? <laughs> You're funny. You're comedic. Um, unless you're doing some Chris Paul shit, but even then, you're going to need to build a good foundation of a shot overall. And it's not like I could just be out here Chris Pauling all the time. And so, because um, that's close quarters. That's also a limited, that's a limited type of shot you could get because as a guard, how many pick and rolls are you going to be able to get? And do you even have the IQ? A lot of people, hold on. Let me drop this gem right quick. Let me drop this gem. This is a crazy gem, right? You got to understand this. A lot of players are like, I'm a small guard. Let me let me work on my mid-range game so I could be like Chris Paul. Are you a small guard in the offense with as many pick and rolls with such a high dosage of pick and rolls that you're going to have that many opportunities to be able to be consistent and knock down those shots? Are you in that type of offense? And also this, this is the most important part. Are you going to develop the IQ necessary for you to maximize a pick and roll? And that doesn't just mean, oh, I got to drop coverage. I'm going to come off and shoot this. No. Where is the help defense? Do I have two on the weak side, one on the strong side? Do I have an empty strong side? Who is the tag man? How am I going to be able to adjust according to all of these different reads? What's my feel with the player who's playing this drop? And then what's the feel on this tag? What's the little signifiers to see if I got a lob pass versus if I have this float or a fade? Like, are you going to build an IQ necessary for you to say, 
I'm going to come off these pick and rolls and be a pick and roll guy like Chris Paul, right? Are you going to be able to do that? And that's where players won't. All they think it is is just, I'm going to come off the screen, shoot. I'm going to come off slip, shoot. You don't even know what the fuck to read. You don't even understand I got to read the weak side tag, right? The weak side, man, and not the player in the drop. You don't even understand, okay, sometimes I may come off the screen and the way they play to help on this certain side, I'm going to have to adjust to this and cut off my angles, right? How how do I need to angle myself coming off this screen? Like, it'd be shit like that. People think, oh, I could just play like Chris Paul. Chris Paul's game requires Chris Paul's IQ. And I don't even think people have the work ethic to be able to go and do that. So that's another thing about it. I just had to say that. Um, but he really saying Goon being out for has uh, supposed to do with Jay's consistency recently or Rocket success. I ain't gonna lie, you asked me, I ain't gonna lie, you asked me, what did, what what has caused Jalen Green to play so good? I just want you to go do this, right? I just want you to go do this. You can check this yourself. Go look at the Jalen Green video I posted, right? Or the Jalen Green stream, the last one I did, right? You got, if it's a stream, it's the one with him on the side, head of highlights, right? Go check the date of that and look at his numbers since the video, that video has been posted. And then look at his numbers before that game. That's all, that's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. I don't know. I don't know if my shit reached, but all I can tell you is ever since then, he's been averaging 27 while he was averaging about 18 on a year. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say when it comes down to that. So we'll get some water. We're going to get into this last like a minute and a half of clips. Bet that, but Pete this. Pete this, right? So this is really just directly for Taylor. So understand, right? Just as a shooter playing some, playing off the ball, this is something that can even apply to a lot of players. So understand this. Just being in an offense and just getting more playing time like Taylor has throughout, throughout the season, these are just the shots that should only fortify the type of shit you should work on, which is lifting up from the corner, lifting, lifting and drifting. So now it's like, okay, even if I hit that, doesn't mean all because I hit it, I stopped working on it. You continue to work on it because I want to get more efficient in it. Because ultimately, my efficiency isn't really at its peak. It's not at its maximum. So it's not like, okay, I hit this, on boom, I, I got this shot in my bag already. Nah, make that, get that shit better. Take it from 36% to 41%, 42%. Especially wide open off a of closeout, get that shit even higher, 45%. You know what I'm saying? There's still limits to it. Or there's still levels to it. So... And now even this, I want you to even understand this as a shooter. I understand this as a shooter. So Taylor's what, 6'10", 6'11". He ends up setting this screen. Jabari Smith calls out that switch of Fran Van Vliet. This right here, that's a shot. You see Van Vliet close, but Van Vliet is six foot versus 6'10", 6'11". If you get just comfortable just shooting over a player who's a foot smaller, that's a high quality look. You ask me, that's a high quality look. It's just, do you believe in self? Have I put the reps up? Have I been able to um, do all the things that's necessary, not just physically in, in the reps, but mentally as well to be able to maintain focus and concentration on a shot that really is open because all it boils down to is getting the ball to the release point. That's all it boils down to. And if I get it there, it's automatic. And Fred Van Vliet at six foot can't reach it. That's a shot easy to over the top. That's a shot you got to take. If you work on it, of course, if you work on it. And even young players in the league, bro. Young players in the league. You hate to see this shit, bro. You hate to see it because you end up getting here. You know how many players going to end up getting this call? A lot of players. But not a rookie. Not a rookie. That's where that shit sucked, though. Damn, bro. You know how many people get that call, bro? Because you even understand the, the, the course of a game, right? Refs miss 90% of fouls. Honestly. Like, if we're, all, if we're playing to the book, they miss like 80 90%. And so, like, you can't just always stop the game and call a foul. They're going to be selective with the whistle. And so it just sucks that as a just a rookie, you have to get the burden of that. And so it makes it look like it's sorry, but at the end of the day, it was a foul. Now, pick and rolls. All y'all can learn from this. All y'all can learn from this. Don't matter who it is. Pete. Pete game, though, right? And so I even remember before, we were talking about how on pick and rolls, if you learn how to play in the pick and roll, not just on the ball and directly in action, but off the ball as well, it's going to help you be able to, you're always going to be able to have a spot on the floor, just learning how you must navigate in these situations. This is what I'm talking about right here. So understand this. Keontae George gets his hand off of Kessler. I really want you all to understand uh, Taylor, right, in this corner. 
And so what ends up happening, the rescreen occurs. And now with the ball going away from this side, from uh, from this side, right? With the, away from the side that Taylor is on, what's gonna end up happening for this weak side, right? Kier Lewis, he's gonna end up having to shake up because boom, Dylan Brooks on this tag. Then you even end up having uh, Reggie Bullock step in as well. And so at this point, this is where the point guard makes his decision of where he really wants to pass the ball, right? This is where he's getting loaded. And so the next thing that he does is going to be a decision. And Keir Lewis raises up. Taylor Hendricks stays in the same spot. And the reason as to which he can't stay in the same spot here is because Bullock's going to be your closeout. And if you were already rose up a little bit over here, got into his line of sight, could have got that pass. Not necessarily about this play in itself, but more so about the habit going forward. And if you don't lift up from that corner, you won't be seen, right? So if that ball is going going away from you, it's gonna indicate it's an indicator as to what you got to lift up, right? And it's something as simple as this, at least for me when I was, when I played, right? It's just as simple as can the person with the ball be able to see me where I am, right? And if they can't see me, then that means they can't pass to me because there's a defender between you, you and me. So that means there's no line to throw that pass unless it's going to be outside my frame, right? They're going to have to throw that into space. And a lot of point guards won't throw that ball out into space, even though some players may get, it may be good to be able to step into it, but if they can't really see it, they're not going to throw that into space. It's, it's going to be a little more difficult. So what you just got to do is get yourself in line of sight and make sure you could see the ball. So if the concept of the ball is going away, I lift up here. It's too complicated. Let me just make sure I can see you. Right, I get into your line of sight. I get a line of pass away from the defender that may be in between us and where we started. So that's one thing. This is gonna get a lot of could get a lot of open looks. You just lift up, you drift down, get you open. Yo, what's good, Ellie? What's good? And this is another one. I love talking about these shots. I love talking about these shots because you can get so many open looks off these little. Uh, triple threat manipulations, right? You can manipulate so much with these moves. I'm gonna have to go point three three, right? And this is a this is a real concept. All y'all could do the same shit, right? It just depends on the ratio between your height and the defender in front of you. So understand, right? Look, so when Taylor catches this, right? Reggie Bullock ends up closing up this gap between him and when he gets up into the shot from the corner. And so now he gets a hand that's about right there. It's almost hand to hand, right? But you could have got more space for that shot. Now, how do you get more space for that shot? Is that once you get this catch right here, you got to understand. The key, if you want to be able to have space, is to establish your ground, to cover ground by having a wider base so that once they close out, right, you've already established room. You've already consumed room. You've consumed some space. And so now they're only forced to now guard you further back, right? They're only forced to guard you further back. And so now what would end up happening is that if the left foot is down behind that line, right, as a pivot foot, the right foot is also inside that line, but you got a good triple threat stance for a second, just for a split second, not the whole time. So I want you to bring that right foot back, right? Say that right foot actually starts here. You actually get a triple threat. You're consuming this space right here. So he's not going to be up that close. He's probably going to be about six inches further back just because you cover that, that space with that triple threat. And now that's when you get up into that shot. You have less of a hand, the cleaner of a look. And also you'll be in a better of a base because you started in that triple threat. You started low. You started loaded. So now it's only going up and you're going to also be more balanced. So that's one thing I always, I did a shit ton of. And I just think about it. I may even just start hooping drills in the Patreon as well. I may start doing that shit. Like all these little workouts, all these little shots I be telling you all about, I may just record that. Like the hooping workouts too, not just the vertical jump shit. So let me know if y'all fuck with that as well because I got an abundance of drills. I got a, not even just drills, but ways to layer a certain move if you need to add it. And so this is even for all players as well. <laughs> I really do be questioning some players, how some certain players train just as a whole, just in basketball in general because a lot of players will go into the off season and they begin to work on isolation. They work on pick and rolls, right? But am I going to get that in the game? Probably not. Most players will not. But what you usually will get, oftentimes as a player, is a handoff, right? And so not a lot of players will decide to get into the offseason and work on their handoff game. And that's a game as to which that should have been a three. You work on the handoff game, right? If you even go back a little bit into that Fred Van Vliet stream where I, where I was talking about the slow step-ins, this is really where it comes down. Because if you, if you learn how to just step into these shots, when defenders say go under, that's a 
three right here off the catch. Then practically a three off the catch. You just got to step in sharp, right? You recognize they going under, shot. Easy, easy money. Work on that handoff game where defenders decide to go under because what this says on the scouting report is catch and shoot, right? They say, Taylor, the end of the game, catch and shoot, right? Boom, he's going to pop, shoot. Handoff, what are you going to do on the handoff? Not going to chase him over the top. We're going to go under because he's told only he, he can only shoot off the catch, right? He can only shoot off the catch. So when the handoffs occur, under. That's where, boom, you burn him. And now once you burn him, you get a handoff maybe every now and then, downhill, right? And then they don't even know, this is not even on the scout report. How do we guard him with going downhill on a, off a handoff, right? And then now it's really going to force adjustments. And that's that's how you layer your game, right? That's how you expand the ways as to which you could possibly score. Instead of just being catch and shoot, where being catch and shoot could be limited to seven points a game, right? Maybe seven points a game, nine points a game. But now if you add in more action, say first a handoff, which you could get catch and shoot style of shots in a handoff, now, all right, boom, I take that 12, I take that 10, I can make that cool 13, 14, right? And then depending on also how much, how well you build the handle, how well you build the movement, IQ, all the little things, that shit could be ever expand, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's just how the perception I took playing off the catch. Like I was like, what's the most readily available way as to which I could possibly score being someone who, who didn't use a whole handle package? Handoff handoff it's just like a pick and roll damn near it's just that you don't got to set too much of it up except the only setup you got to do is without the ball that's the best thing about it i don't even think y'all realize that hold on i'm going on a little tangent about handoffs because this is what this is a part again i really fuck with right which a lot of players overlook right all the setups you have to do for a handoff you don't require the ball so if you're not a ball handler i could just go boom step in bump get that you know what i'm saying come off these angles sharp right so like this is really just a easy way for players who don't have a great, the greatest handle to be able to find another way to score. And so now even once you say they go over, now it's just a couple dribbles. I make a couple reads, pass. I don't got to get into no size ups, ISOs, dealing with pressure like that. It's simple. It's a simple game. Stream again, by the way. Ah, we good. That's draw. I need something to improve. All right, bet that, bet that, bet that. That's going to be on the PG-13 tier. <laughs> PG-13 tier, and then everyone going for it. But, hey, it's all good, though. Hey, Rel, it's just all good. It's all good. It's all good. It is what it is. It is what it is. Got to get through it. And so I want to talk about something I talked about with Fred Van Vliet on this play in itself. I want to talk about this play as well. So I talked about, you probably don't even remember it, but I talked about a concept of range, right? I think it was with Jalen Green, actually, right? And maybe Jalen Green again. Now Taylor Hendricks is guarding the ball. So defensively, you must understand range, right? Understand range. So look. Taylor Hendricks ends up stepping up to guard Jalen Green. Now, if you're guarding Jalen Green ISO, that's the range you want to guard him with, right? That's the range you, you're comfortable playing. And so what ends up happening, though, is that players get um, uncalibrated, right? They lose orientation and just overall defensive presence when a screen occurs because you must get higher to get over the screen if you must go over. And so now you're playing at this range. And now since you've already been built up that, that engine a little bit, right? You've built up that twitch. You want to cover up this this gap once again because you think another screen may happen, right? And now that's where you mess up because the range you're comfortable playing him with in the isolation was like this. Whereas in the situation, it's now cut down to this in ratio, right? And so now what ends up happening? All right, now he can get his step. He can manipulate you because that's the, that's the range as to which you must break your base and you, he, he allows you to change direction. So... Uh, don't change it. Uh, look to the positive side. Hey, we're going to see. 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 Because like I said, when the Patreon is there, I probably won't be here answering as many questions because it's going to be people on the Patreon. I'm going to make sure they get their bang for the buck. So, even Pete, there's just the weak side. It's a little, be little things like this. It's be little things like this. When you got an empty, when you're on, got a lone weak side, right? And now you're the one who's got to make the tag. You got to understand even how the ball handler reads the situation. The most important thing to understand, what do they read to say, let me not throw this pocket pass? And now, yes, you may be late, but ultimately it's in, it's key that, because once they get in here, they see feet outside the paint, they get in that role every time, right? So you can even use that middle ground as bait to where it's like, okay, let me try to play both, jump that, right? You got the athleticism for it. You could do that. 
or you just take it away entirely and then he just throws it up to the top. But at the same time, Van Vliet's going to have to stop, pivot, turn, and give it back to Dylan Brooks. So this this plug really should have been fully plugged because I just think about it, right? Because you got to think about it from the ball handler's perspective, right? I ain't going to lie. I'm getting to some gems right now. I'm just I'm just in my own thought. Like, I know this is how I be. This is how I really was when I just be sitting here watching film. This is all I'm thinking out loud, though. So understand, even in Fred, Fred Van Vliet's perspective, right? He ends up going right. And now if Taylor Hendricks ends up taking away this 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 role, how is Van Vliet going to be able to get the ball back to Dylan Brooks? He's going to have to stop, pivot, throw it back. And in the time it's going to take him to stop, pivot, and throw it back, someone's could rotate back to Dylan Brooks. So you could take away the role and take away the shot because Van Vliet, right? Van Vliet, what can he not do? Like we've seen at the end of the last breakdown, hook passes because he's a small guard. <sighs> come on. Come on. We locked in. We locked in. This is some shit I was even thinking about before. Then now he ends up fouling them just being caught in no man's land. Trying to reach for that late. If you're going to foul somebody, foul them. Fuck it. But he owed his shit. I ain't going to lie. You fouled him a little too hard. He might have broke his back. He got scoliosis. No cap. But hold on. What's the next play? What's the next one like? I'll look you be forgetting a couple of these plays. Ah, that's what the play is. That's what the play was. That's what the play is. Now, even throughout the course of this game, even thus far, Jalen Green did have a couple of attacks that was on Taylor, and he did see, okay, let me attack him when he's on me because I, I, I like this matchup. But if you really do want to get better, you don't run from the smoke, you run to the smoke, right? So if he sees you as if he sees you as a, as what you, as, as a zebra, right, in a jungle, and he a lion, I'm going to say, fuck that shit, I'm going to turn into a lion. Fuck that, I'm coming right back, you know what I'm saying? Because this exposure to these weaknesses is what's going to allow me to get better, right? You, one of the key phrases that's to which um, I began to like really comprehend and like are pivotal, you know what I'm saying, in terms of how I live is I heard it was kill the gazelle and give birth to the lion, right? Meaning that you know, you, you stop becoming the prey and you become the predator. Meaning you always seek to kill, not run to running from being killed, right? You, you begin to run to it. You begin to try and get the kill instead of running away from being killed. And so... That's the one thing as to which a lot of people fear because embarrassment, right? A lot of people get embarrassed because, okay, this player could be able to work me. He could hit this move, hit that move. But like I said, once you kill the gazelle and give birth to the lion, you now expose your weaknesses and that shows you how you must get stronger, right? It's a good thing that we aren't literally gazelles and lions because if it's one fight, you could be dead, you could be going out of here. But good thing is just metaphorical. You can just come right back and learn from it and improve. Right, so just training, training your game like a muscle. You break it down, you build it back to be even better the next time around. Do I hear someone laughing in the back? No, nah, that's my brother. That's my brother. Legit bugging. Uh, if Jalen Green becomes a decent playmaker and more efficient, he'll be a legit All Star. He, hey, once he gets the, once he, it's just consistency. I ain't gonna lie, consistency, and then that consistency is gonna force him to get better at playmaking. It's gonna force him to, because once defenses begin to hone in on him. Then that's where it gets tough. And I want you to talk, understand this too. You got to understand. Hold on, Pete, this play, right? So you got Taylor, right? He, he going to the right corner. Feeling to the right corner. John Collins got this. Switch right here, Jalen Green. Now, mismatch, right? But this really should be gold every single time, right? And what should... Hey, hey, Gustav, appreciate that sub. Appreciate that sub. But look, what should Taylor Hendricks do now? Y'all see it. Cut. If he followed Dylan Brooks, y'all got to understand. If y'all want to be able to get easy tools anytime when your team when someone goes to double, follow the person if they do go double. Because if you go right behind, you don't give this weak side time to comprehend the fact that the double team, right? So if he followed right behind now, that's easy two points right there. Boom, give me eleven for this game and not nine. You know what I'm saying? That's important. And so it's all like take that two before you take that three, because taking that two is gonna give you rhythm, allow you to feel good. So then once you take that next three. You're not thinking about the three. It's like, okay, I got another bucket. You know what I'm saying? You're not thinking about it so much. Like, ah, oh, shit, I, I know I got to hit this next one because I missed my last two threes. But that layup, it breaks it apart, right? Almost breaks it apart to where it's like, instead of me sitting here and saying, okay, I missed my last two. I got to hit this third, hit this fourth or whatever. And if I miss this third, and it's like, ah, oh, shit, I can't shoot no more. You break it, hit that two. It's like, all right, I'm ready to go take this another three. Bomb. You're not thinking about it. No weight on your shoulders at all. 
He does still end up scoring that. But that two could have been yours. And now here as well. Remember what I talked about before. I ain't gonna lie. In my notebook, I think it's like sitting right back over there. But I literally, <laughs> it's a funny thing. I literally have like two pages of notes on how to score on defenders like Jalen Green. And I talked about this a little bit before, but going back to it once again, he's a fast twitch player. He's an explosive player, athletic player. And so how he's going to play defense is always going to be exactly to that, to speed, to twitch, not to strength and muscle and physicality. That's not how he plays. That's not how he plays offensively, not how his body is built, nor how he plays defensively. And so if you're going to go and attack Jalen Green, that's why I always say, you got to know what type of bag you need for certain players. But in you know, certain perspectives, this is another concept, something I thought about. But it's not just the bag. Um, another thing y'all got to understand is your defenders and all the other stuff. But that's a different conversation. But understand the bag you must use for Jalen Green, right? And that's what elite scorers know for every single player. Is that once they get here, it's like, okay, I'm not going to... He's, he's, you even see, here, see him sitting here fighting, right? He's not trying to be physical. He's trying to use the speed, circle around, get a steal not allow you to get a feel for his body which is where now you just gotta get into his body right use the size use the strength use the exact advantage you have because if you just keep it as simple as let me just use what i have the advantage on right if you just keep it as simple as that then you'll just also be able to take advantage of what he's not good at guarding which is players with size and strength so ultimately that's where you got to say fuck i'm gonna play some bully ball because even if you do play bully ball he ain't gonna do what fred van vliet did to you last time Hold on, we connecting concepts. If you play bully ball, he's not going to do what Fred Van Vliet did to you last time where he pulled the chair. Jalen Green don't got that defensive IQ. He don't. And so, boom, hit, boom, hit, boom, hit. Not going to be no third time to charm where, all right, he's going to pull the chair and I'm going to be on balance, off balance. Now, this is where you could actually use that strength, just knowing how smart the defenders are. So, this rip through right here, that's not the, just not the right bag. He wants to play exactly to that. Um, t -t 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 -t. One thing I don't like about uh, OT is that the comedic rules that will make hurt the player legit talent. Yeah, I heard about y'all talked about that shit a little more. That's why I heard about that shit. Y'all talked about that stream before, or on last stream. So understand. Everybody see this play. I just realized everybody pointing that shit out. <laughs> this play was loaded up to the motherfucker. Look, they calling that shit out. All right, you got to go chase. But here. Jalen Green did use good patience when, when I talked about this last time from the offensive perspective. But as a defender, the most important part you got to know is that you can't allow their pace to impact your own pace, right? And so even when he gets here, this plug occurs. He has no lane. And so your job is not done as a defender until you go and take away the lane in itself. But he stops and leaves the lane and stays on the side because he stopped as a ball handler. And so he went back just to get forward, but he took you down, got you to a stop, and left that lane wide open. And so that's a tough thing to break. It's a tough habit to break. But once you do break it, they're going to take away a lot of buckets and opportunities to score. And so he ends up just getting here again, boom, tries to get that dunk, ends up going to the free throw line. And so that's the end of this breakdown, though. This was a two-hour, 37-minute stream. I did say I was going to try to keep it condensed, but it is what it is. It is what it is, though. We're going to be live again on Wednesday. It might be a March Madness breakdown on Wednesday. I'm telling you all right now, might be March Madness, men's or women's March Madness breakdown. And I know for sure, regardless, even if it's women's basketball, y'all may not like it. Y'all know how I break down film. Women's games show straight skill because you extract athleticism. And now, okay, how, how are they actually getting these buckets? Like a Caitlin Clark. How is she getting these buckets? Juju Watkins. How is she getting these buckets? Right? You're going to see pure skill. So stay on tune for that. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to keep a lookout on the box scores, the scoreboards, all that. Stay on the lookout as well for the Patreon. Uh, thank you for the stream. No problem. And D, or the GOAT D-Lo. I just watched D-Lo not too long ago, so I don't know if I'll do that anytime soon. But unless he goes off, unless he goes off. But like I always tell y'all, man, make sure y'all sacrifice your present self and invest into your future self and do everything you need to do to get to where you're here to be. So discipline or regret. 